Well, for the at-home listeners, uh, Sono's admiring my Entourage posters on the wall, but um, I'm saying that, like, Entourage, this is like Entourage. You think you're like Entourage? No, I think you are. <laughs> What does that mean? Am you're, I? You're your there with entourage? Conan and, and Rob Reiner and Albert Brooks is coming over. And I'm in that entourage. I am. You're in the the good entourage. So me. The Jewish entourage. It's me, Conan, the Jewish entourage. Me, Conan, Rob Reiner. I guess we'll get into it. And That's it, Albert Brooks. Yeah. Okay. Rob Reiner and Albert Brooks, I feel, are Jewish enough to give you and Conan a little fair. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. So you have a drink. Can I get you anything else? I have a um, blue bottle canned cold brew coffee. Can I look at it and I'll smell it? Well, it's sealed. If you smell it... That's okay. You know what? I don't need that. I'll put it back. Is that for working out? Yeah, I use this for uh, for rehabbing a little bit. What's rehabbing? Oh, just um, if you think uh, Albert Brooks and Rob Reiner are Jewish enough, why don't you take a look at my joints? What does that mean? Jewish people typically have like, oh, ow. Oh, ailments? But they talk about it? Um, You're always like, oh. If you have a bad back, it doesn't mean you're Jewish. Is that fair to say? <laughs> but you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. Okay, be <Theme> music. <laughs> Scoop doo, uh, uh, blue, blue. Rick, I, miss you too. I, I love that you have this podcast so we have an excuse to see each other every year. Yeah, that's a real thing. Uh, it used to be just we were on the same lot, and that was that, that was the best. That was so fun. That was you guys because you guys recorded, you guys not recorded, taped so close to us that I could just do go to work and then like come on by after. Why did you feel the need to, to uh, really ask you, not being a smart ass? Changed, recorded to taped. Because I feel like recorded is now what I say for the podcast and taped is what I used to say for the show. Got it. Makes sense. You don't record a show, do you? Yeah, I'm recording this. Okay. I sometimes correct myself when I say filming because I feel like I shouldn't say filming yeah. unless it's on film. Uh -huh. So I say recording or taping. So you're going to start season two of your show soon. It actually comes out next month, this episode. Um, comes out in a couple weeks okay. um okay. oh so you've already done it well um you've already like filmed at it, least an episode by the time this comes out i will have filmed uh, a few episodes but um um i'm technically i'm filming the first episode of the season next week on oh, monday okay. okay yeah is it fun are you excited yeah uh season two of not dead yet comes out february 7th do you know i watch it for you specifically I watched that show specifically for you. Thank you. Yeah. I okay. feel... Um, it's a fun show, but I watch it because you're in it. And you're my friend. I hear, and again, this is just from the trades, but that's why people do tune in. And I don't know if that's insulting to the rest of the cast and they're fantastic. Yeah. But they people are saying like people are watching for me and I'm flattered. For you, like people you don't know. Okay. I get messages. I, I don't want to check my phone now. Because we're recording and I don't want to be rude. So strange people text you saying strangers. They, strangers, it's not they're not strange people. <laughs> well, you know, I can't I can't speak for all of them, but uh, yeah, they say uh, I watch this show just because of you. Okay. Do you put out an ad in the trades that say that says that, and then so when oh, people oh, say oh, I read oh, it oh, in oh, those oh. trades, they're really reading an ad you personally paid for? Yes. But isn't that what advertising is? This episode is sponsored by Mint Mobile. To get this new customer offer and your three-month unlimited wireless plan for 15, 15 bucks a month. It's really 15 bucks a month? Yeah. What the hell am I doing with my phone? Go to mintmobile.com slash Tyso. And then Brent, at the same time, let's see if we could memorize this. Put the paper down. Mm -hmm. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Tyso. In three, two. Cut your you mobile... Cut, no <laughs> <laughs> cut your wireless, wireless bill to 15, 15 bucks a month <laughs> at... Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Tyso. Nice. Hey, Orange County, California. This week, I will be at the Brea Improv at 8 p.m. January 24th. Woo. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. 
Wednesday. <laughs> Ticket link in the description. I don't think that's what advertising is at all. That's just you trying to start a, a rumor and it's, it's kind of sad. By the way, um, did you hear that Conan is gay? <gasps> I didn't. Did you read it in the trades? I, I, by the time this episode comes out, we will be. <laughs> I've been spreading a lot of rumors. I've been seeing what, what I could get. Can Do they? I wonder if they have like very specific guidelines on what you can say in those like full page yeah. ads and stuff. Are they mu- Here's why I think they would. I have a headshot. I think you've seen it. The David Schwimmer headshot. Yes. And it's a picture of David Schwimmer with my name on it. I went to numerous, um, in LA, there's printing shops that are like meant for headshots. None of them would print it because that's not my name. Oh. I had to have my agent. I mean, that's not your face. Excuse me. That's not his name. It's not my face. That's not his. Okay. Yeah. So they're like, oh, that's, you're not allowed to do that. So imagine if I put in the trades, you know, that people are watching Not Dead Yet because Rick is great. So I don't think they would let it. So. That's interesting. But I mean, do they, they have know more that integrity a- than like the New York Times. Yeah. Hello. Now I know how to work it to your camera, by the way. I've done this enough times where I'm like, hi. Gulp, gulp, gulp. This is your fifth time on, right? Or fourth? I think it's fifth. Is it fifth? And yeah, I, th- I think so. Yeah, because you've been on every January. Yeah. So this came out. This will be fourth then. This, this My podcast came out in 2019 after January. So 2020 January, 2021 January, 2022 2023, this hey, is number five. It's a January tradition. Mm-hmm. I'll say it's an Armenian Christmas tradition because our Christmas is on January 6th. Is that kind of like how England has Box Day? I don't know. I I, I am not... I don't want to say I'm not, I'm we'll not Christian it. enough to know why. Right. Like I wasn't raised going to Sunday school and someone teaching me this is why we re- celebrate on January 6th. And I know there's probably people who are listening right now who are like, you idiot. Do you think there's, do you, do you get mad at, uh, at all of those, um, what's the word people like to use? Uh, what are those, what do those people do when they storm the Capitol? What do they call them? Insurrectionists? Yeah. The insurrectionists. Isn't that when you have, oh, that's a owner. Oh. Um, do you feel that the insurrectionists got in the way of, of, uh, yeah. Armenian Christmas? They took it. They took it from us. Now, when you say January 6th, what's the thing everybody thinks about? Storming the Capitol, not Armenian Christmas. Everybody used to think about Arme- Armenian Christmas on January 6th. I, I did. Everybody did. And they took that from us. And I think that was the real crime. Would you say that uh, that there's uh, a controversy that this is something where a bunch of white people took something, uh, occupied something for the Armenians, but nobody's crying out about that? I didn't think about that, but I do now think that. Yes, I think that... It maybe, maybe it was more than an election thing. Maybe it was a concerted effort on the part of the white man to take this away from Armenians. Do you think of insurrectionists as white men? Yeah, a lot of them were white, huh? Weren't they? A lot. I um, I was so filled with adrenaline at the time, I didn't even notice. Yeah. But... Uh, I do know the people I went with were white. Oh. <laughs> spreading, I'm spreading rumors. I'm just trying to say a lot of rumors. Did you read that in the with, trades? I went with Brett Morin. You will by the time this comes up. Brett Morin went to the, uh, it was an insurrectionist. Uh, he would. You know, I do know one black guy that was there. Lamorne Morris. He was uh, an insurrectionist. Oh, was he? Yeah. Okay. From New Girl. Uh, well, from New Girl. Now, New Armenian Christmas, which is known as January 6th. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe this is an insurrectionist uh tradition gulp 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 yeah that it takes so much effort for you to do what you do to just take a sip from your coffee do you watch brad pitt in movies oh yeah if he didn't look the way he did yeah. but was still given the same opportunities and then developed a uh uh a reputation who who is still able to perform in a fun way. Yeah. What would people be talking about? What do they love watching Brad Pitt do in movies? Uh, eat. Not just eat, but, but interact like, like space work stuff, like unwrapping, eating, drinking. Sure. Chew- sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't like chewing on this podcast. If I did, I would be holding sandwiches the whole way through. Right. Right. I don't think a lot of people like listening to chewing. 
No. No? Okay. Because I, I, I get it. I don't like it. Uh, but, this, but the way you're... See, you're doing a... It's a very gulp, involved gulp, gulp. process for you to take a sip. And then you got a little saucer. Mm-hmm. I love... Like I said, I love food. I love dipping. But if I can't eat and if I can't dip in sauce, allow me to drink and set it on a saucer. We'll be oh. right back. <laughs> If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. We're back. (laughs) You know, uh, on this podcast, if we ever hear anybody sipping, we put in effect, which we use yours sometimes. Oh, which one? Go, 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 go. Oh, I say it. Did I say it? You said it. Oh, okay. For the past year, we've used it numerous times. My, I have a little kid who's, I have twins, but one of them, they're both two and a half. Because they're twins. But one of them, when he drinks, he goes. Mm, 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 mm. When he swallows it. Is yeah. He trying to be funny or. Is, no, he's it's just. Does he have a speech impediment? No. He, he will. Is that true? Wait, are you being serious? Because he able, might be have a little bit of a lisp. Yeah. Actually, yeah, he's not able to put the tongue to the roof of his mouth. Uh, I bet you by the time he's in second grade, he'll have problems saying ours. I would start him on speech therapy now. It'll not only fix the swallows. It'll help him with his. Rick, are you being serious? Because he does, he can enunciate as well as Did his you brother. Straighten that, the, the, that thing. This one? Yeah. Did I do it? The other way. To, uh, to, yeah, thank you. Uh, keep going. Great. Thanks. That's a nice, that's a nice thing. You know where I got it? No. Warner Brothers. I, I got one from the Iron Giant, signed by Brad Bird. Warner Brothers. From Warner Brothers. Outside the Starbucks when they had that yes. sale where it said $1,200 on sale for 200 And yes. we're thinking, what a deal. But they just made that number up. Is that true? They had- Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Don't- this is signed by Bill Hanna. <laughs> you were about to say hater. Hanna-Barbera. No. Signed by both of them. Oh, you were making a joke. You don't know who no, they are. No, I, I did. I knew that was the Hannah and Hannah Barbera, but I didn't. I couldn't read that. That was Barbera. But if you knew it was Barbera, you wouldn't need to read it. What? Yeah. What? No. Yeah. Anyway, so that that's like something. Yeah. Are they? Aren't they? Aren't they dead? I don't like to talk about other people on the podcast. Not my place. But I will say I that I like also hear did. that Andy Richter's gay. Oh. <laughs> So, Sona, you and I were supposed to do this uh, a, a, a little bit ago, but you had to reschedule because Alba Brooks and Rob Reiner were coming on. Yeah. And what a cool yeah. reason. to It's not out yet. Well, by the time this comes yeah, out. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah, it, it will have been out. Yeah, but I wanted to. I'm very excited to listen to it. It's. Um, it was very cool to be in the room with those two. Did you grow up with them being legends to you or is that something that you kind of married into into this business and being around it the second one right i didn't grow up with them it wasn't something like I, I, my parents my parents are immigrants so they didn't like grow up with albert brooks and rob reiner stuff right. but you know you have a very jewish <clears throat> vibe though but that's you mar- married into that yeah what do you mean i married into uh it, it's an entourage reference kind oh, of not really okay. but like being befriending Conan, though not Jewish, befriending a Simpsons writer, yes, makes you understand uh, Jewish. I well, also people. just working for Conan gave me a more, a much better idea of comedy. You know, like I, I, I don't think I fully appreciated what Bob Newhart did for comedy, and now I do. Dick Van Dyke. You know, you know? Bob Newhart and what, oh, what Bob Newhart and Biggie Smalls have in common? What? Um, the re- big revelation was it was all a dream. Do you understand what I mean? No. Um, do you understand what, how that? Uh, uh, I get the to, biggie I, part about it. Uh, at the end of the Bob Newhart show, Bob Newhart had two shows. I, I don't remember which one it was, but I, the one that I watched that was on Nick and Night all the time when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, the the series finale, spoiler alert. Yeah. Which I believe in whenever you're saying you it. do even things that like left the air thirty years ago, forty years ago. There are higher stakes and lower stakes, but yeah. I still think, you know, roundabouts, I'll get back. Speaking of a roundabout, we'll be right back with this, but you go in and then I don't really see him in LA, but you go and then you, you go around this big circle and there's like, it, it, those are so much more efficient than four way stop signs. Love them. However, if there's nobody behind you, maybe you don't use your turn signal when you're turning off 
so be it, I guess. But that's I think that's bad practice. But always put your turn signal on. Yeah. And if you don't know if somebody's behind you, when in doubt, just use your turn signal. I feel like a, uh, I feel like a turn signal is like a spoiler. Like you're letting people know you might not need it. It's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. It's not like, oh, shit, he's turning right. Just you, but sometimes it's like oh, this fucking asshole didn't use his turn signal. Oh, OK, I get it. You know, you know, when I do you remember that movie Magnolia? I Is think that it was Tom Paul, Cruise. Yes. With I, I think it was it. Paul Thomas Anderson. I think it was him that made it. I think I really hope it was. But there was a part where they said something about like citizen in Citizen Kane. She like he like spoiled something. And she goes, why don't you just say that, you know, Rosebud was a slut. So the entire time I when I was watching Citizen Kane, I was waiting for a slut to come into the picture. Well, why do you think I started this podcast? The, the whole podcast or this episode? Podcast. Oh, you're waiting for a slut. Hello? Oh, come on in. Oh, hey, baby. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, oh. Rick, you're long distance. Just say no. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, the the direction I gave just now, you believe that that's, you know that that's probably real. Oh, you especially know? if it was with John. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. So, <clears throat> uh, spoiler alert, Bob Newhart show, uh, he woke up and the whole series was a dream. It was all a dream. It, isn't that also how another series ended? Was, it was it St. Elsewhere? Didn't another one also end with a dream and people were like, what? I'm not sure. I believe you. I haven't watched that. What is, what is a good finale for you? Will you think of some too while I'm thinking? I have, a, I have a few in my head that I, I already think of. I, I'll, I can start. Cheers. Uh, the six feet under finale. I didn't even watch six feet under. I only watched, watched like a episode. couple episodes seasons. Then I fell off and then I was like, well, I should just watch the finale. I watched the finale and it blew my brain. Oh, oh. it was so good. Um, six feet under. Yes. Such a good, it was so right for the show. And I didn't then, watch it. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, I'm feeling multicams are going to come up a lot. I also like the Sopranos one. Sure, I love this. I've watched, I've rewatched the show so many times. Uh, do you really? Yeah, it's a big commitment. Uh, I have another analogy, an, as the turn signal to you're uh, analogous, mm -hmm. an analogous. You're thinking of Legolas, the archer from Lord That's of the Rings. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, food. I don't know what to eat. Okay, you, I don't know what I want. But if you have leftovers have to, in the fridge, yeah, you don't. It doesn't. You don't have to think about it. You just. I'll eat this. This will be great. It'll be great. Uh huh. That's how I feel about a show that I've already seen. I don't have to pay as much attention, even though I probably will. I don't have to make a choice of what to watch. Oh, I'll, I'll just keep watching Sopranos. I'm on on season four. I'll just keep watching it's Sopranos. Comfort viewing. Yeah, it's comfort viewing for you. Also, do you really have trouble figuring out what to eat? I feel like. I feel like food for you is a very uh, interesting topic. What are you doing? Do you I'm trying. Sneeze, maybe? No, I'm trying to say it in a way. You're a finicky guy when it comes to your food. No, that's not a blanketed statement. I'm pretty finicky with a lot of things that I do. However, food yeah. is a big one. Gulp, Why? Gulp. Were you a picky eater when you were a kid? Like if I called your mom yeah. and I was like, how is Rick? Like if you put, you know, something in front of him and he'd be like, yay, gobble, 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 gobble. Let's do it. Let's get her on the horn. Oh. But before we forget, <laughs> uh, I, th I think Fresh Prince when Carlton was still in the bathroom upstairs. As far as series finales. Oh, all right. When he doesn't he come down and the house is empty? Yeah, Will turns off the light. He does the. I'll, we'll do. We should both do series finale light turning off acting. Okay. When you look around, they do it in Cheers. Okay. Yeah. Where he goes? Sorry, we're closed. Ooh, mommy, hi. I have you on the pod. Oh. I have you on the podcast with my dear friend Sona Movsesian. Hi. Hi. And Sona was wondering if I was a picky eater as a kid. And 
I think you. This might go either way. How would you answer that? Uh, I'm gonna think. You you had your likes and dislikes, but you pretty much were pretty cool about eating most everything. Cool. Oh. Anything you want to plug? <laughs> <laughs> that's called not dead yet starring the handsomest boy in the world mm-hmm. you know uh, and, i'll tell you for uh, for if there are any picky eaters out there it doesn't matter because there'll, there'll be something you'll find at the greyhound in glendale and at highland park Ooh, well, two locations uh, if we're talking about food uh, I, 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 i'm gonna go uh, it's cutting in and out and all right. Well, the Greyhound in Highland Park and in Glendale. <laughs> My brother's place. Oh, that's nice. I love you. I love you. And nice talking to you. Oh, Larry, mom, nice mom, talking mom, to you say, too. Say I love you to me, and then I want to do the type of acting where I'm embarrassed to say I love you in front of Sona. Pretend you can't hear. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna, okay. uh, and then mom, you're not gonna realize that I'm embar- uh, I'm embarrassed, um, the first time, and then you're gonna realize it, and you're gonna be like. And then, but you're going to want me to say it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. But daddy just got early. I'm so excited. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. All right. Uh, I love you. you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. But you said it. You said, I love you. Yeah. I said it the same way that uh, people, um, people ask for uh, 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 a playboy behind the counter at a 7-Eleven. Okay. I'll get some Carmelos, Tic Tacs, a pack of marbles, a Playboy. But do you guys have any AA batteries? You just sandwich it in yeah. there. Your mom is so sweet. She loves you so much. She yeah. called you the handsomest boy. Did you and your brother fight a lot? I should have asked her. Okay. Because, you know, I have two boys. And so I'm like, are you yeah. guys going to fight a lot? Is this and one just of them is going to have a really, really serious speech impediment. Stop saying really, really serious. It's going to be serious. Well, how do you know? Did you have a speech impediment? What I, did you do? I couldn't say my R's. But that's cute. Yeah. Except for when I, uh, I would say I'm going to my my room and my brother would be like, oh, you going to your room? You going to your room? <laughs> but how old were you? Don't kids third, like grow third, out third, of? fourth grade. Yeah. Look at me now. Your R's sound Girl. great. Did you, did you do speech therapy? Yeah. So uh, the difference between an R and an L, as p- people at home probably already know this, is the L is the teeth, the tongue hitting the tip of the teeth. And the R is the tongue hitting the roof of the mouth. So if you go, R. if you go uh, like this, and then roll uh. your tongue to the back, it'll turn to an R. <laughs> the fuck happened? That's probably genetic. It's probably why your son has this. <laughs> don't I, I don't have a speech impediment. Yes, but but it's still uh, in the genes. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you have great teeth. Did you have braces? No. Oh, what? No braces. Oh, fuck you. No, look at the bottom though. That's not. Bad. I had braces for three years. Look at my bottom. Yeah, that's probably a, your your son's gonna probably need them. He probably has something going on. Stop blaming me for all the shit my son has. Maybe maybe he just is that way. You know, there's at a certain point you could get mad at people for blaming you. Yeah, and that's only the only reason that's triggering you is because you're unwilling to take accountability. And do you think this goes? Is this a through line in your life? Not only do I always take accountability, I take it even when I'm not at fault. Well, then let me be the first to say I made up that thing about big swallows <laughs> and uh, speech impediments. Wait, are you being serious? Yeah. Are you being serious? Rick. He can enunciate as well as Did his you brother. Straighten that? The, the, that thanks. This one? Yeah. Did I do it? The other way. You did a thing while I was doing a thing? Did I, Welcome to the that, podcast. Was it even tilted? This is like my 40th time here, and I I, I believed you. Yeah, yeah I remember. So yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, you got a trophy. Uh, for what? Uh, people believing me. Okay. Check your pockets. Upside down. Do you do you ever think about growing a mustache? Yeah, I sometimes I sometimes do it. Um, I sometimes grow a mustache. Uh, and the way I like to do it, and maybe you can't really tell now, but my mustache at the moment is a little bit longer than my facial hair, just a little. I can tell. What I would do is I'll trim everything but the mustache. Yeah. You grow the mustache out for a week or two, then you let this start growing in, and then you got like three days of um, what's the guy's name who who uh, who uh, it, from. He does a, he goes, he like does this with his arms and Tom Cruise like has him do it because of Mission Impossible. Oh, Henry Cavill. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. He's still my heart. Yeah. He, I learned that from him. Ugh. And I feel like I look like him when I do it too. <clears throat> do you think the mustache era is ending? I think the mustache era is, is coming back. You do? I think mustache, analogy guy, mustache for men and boobs for women run the same cycles. And I think boobs are coming back. I didn't know boobs. You could, so you can thank the high heavens for that. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I didn't know boobs were out. They're not that they were out. They just weren't the priority. It went to butt for a long time. So no one, so it's not butt anymore? But, butt is still big. Okay. Butt is still big. No one cared about the butt in the 90s. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, not the insurrectionists, if you know what I mean. That White people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That is true. See, I'm glad boobs were still in when I was single. I think because that's oh, yeah. really all I got. It's not all you have, but it's your no, biggest it's thing. Things. Yeah. You no, know, it was. But you know what? I'm. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but you know, I developed in fourth grade. I. I uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show before and after. Fourth grade is so young, and I think people are always like, "Oh, boobs." Fourth grade. Boobs, that's ten boobs. years old. Yeah, I developed that early, and my and I was like so. Uh, like put off by him that I asked my mom that we we had to go see a doctor to make sure everything was okay with me. See, you've been and Jewish for a long time. Fucking bitch on the playground yelled at me while she was at the top of the swing that I needed a bra, like to the whole playground, and I I still remember it. I hate her so much. That embarrassed you. Well, yeah. Wouldn't it embarrass you if someone told you you need a, a bra and told the whole like It's different. I'm a recess? guy. So I'd be like, dude, you need to tuck that big dick at yours. <laughs> you know, I, I would. Oh, oh, what do you mean? It's not that big. <laughs> so no. But as a kid, before you realize it might be something that you might you might be interested in. Is that how yeah. you got the job with Conan? Because of your big tits? Because of my big tits? Um, I don't think so. I think For it's probably. That's how I got the job. Oh. Oh, you want to start that? You want to put it in the trades? Um, <clears throat> I think it was because I'm just, I was qualified, you know. But boring. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but boring. But, but, but boring. Speech impediment. What's up? I'm Bursky. Let me see them bo 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 boobies. <laughs> I liked it. One extra too many buzz. Bo bo boobies. Here you can see. Yeah. Because with one, a buff for each booby. A buff for each booby. So bo bo boobies. I'm Bursky, let me bury my beak in them bu bu boobies. See, that's a lot of use of bees, and that's comedy right there. It's nice that you have that in yeah. your arsenal. You remember so much stuff. That's really impressive. Thank you. You don't think, you don't. My, my live editing, uh, live editing or my boobs. Live, ed okay. Why is it the dicks, like small dicks are never like in? It's like it's always about the big dick. Yeah, I, th I think by I think for that statement to be true, we have to remove the fetish category because I think with fetish, there's a category for everything. Like yeah, some that's people true. love a little dick. Yeah, take my wife. Um, Please, for example. Oh, it's a joke I used to do on stage. It was my brother's favorite joke of mine. Oh, uh, I would say uh, take my wife, for example, and then I would do a thing, uh, and people wouldn't laugh. Many times. Oh. And I never knew, was it because it's just not funny to them or do they not know what I'm referencing? Do you have time to still do a lot of stand up? Mm -hmm. I've been doing more than, uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot. Really? Where? Yeah. Uh, like the store, the, the improv factory, puts me up improv? Almost, pretty, almost every week. Oh, nice. Um, maybe th three, four times a month. Yeah. Once a week, maybe the Laugh Factory has been putting me up um, kind of like whenever I ask now. It's really nice. Yeah. And the comedy store, uh, I still do like when other people have shows. I'm, I'm not a paid regular at that place. Mm. Uh, but if you want to get a sweatshirt. Of the comedy store? I have a sweatshirt that uh, uh, with the comedy store logo and it says uh, not passed at the comedy store. Uh. And uh it's, uh, you know, listen, if they're not going to pay me to do shows, let me uh, make. I think on that sweatshirt this year, I've made almost $100,000 on it. That's not true. No, but, you know, we're spreading rumors. You know what? What can I? Be okay. What you know, do I you know, believe? You know. You made me think about getting a speech therapist for my child. I do think it's worth investigating. No, are you, you're you're lying. It's, You're not, they're not basing that on anything. Does he have a lisp? He, he's a little lispy, yeah. Is he swallowing big? 
he's a big swallower. Something might be going on with his mouth, his tongue, his his mouth posture, and it is worth investigating. See, I think sometimes I think they're just so excited they know how to drink out of a cup by themselves that they're that. like make they're like really milking it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I sometimes I'm drinking from something and I just like look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. <laughs> uh huh. So Isn't that yeah, it's impressive? Get him checked. Okay. He also, and I know it's too young. I also know it doesn't matter. There is a better chance that he's gay. Oh, okay, okay. That's uh, science. Yeah, that's where it's a now. Now it's a trope that people make fun of, but that's where like they say gay people have lisps or gay people like they love to swallow. Oh, you know, uh, which is all just just gratuitous, judgmental bullshit. But like the origins of it, sure, did come from that. Pun not intended, but there it was. You, um, you have a really great way of saying things convincingly. Yeah, acting. That's how I. Uh, that that's how I got this podcast to do what it's been doing. <clears throat> I've not only convinced guests to be willing to come on, I've convinced audience with animations and silly mustaches that it's worth listening to. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm really, really impressed with how, like, big this has gotten. Huge. But while we're talking about big podcasts, could you talk to me yeah. about a little bit about Carl, uh, Rob Reiner and, um, and, uh, Gulp, 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 Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks. And, uh, how much did Albert Brooks make you laugh? He made me laugh a lot. One in, one joke in particular, I was almost crying. What was it? Um, he was talking about how when the comedy scene first started in L.A., they would just go to somebody's house and they were all like high school kids going to this guy's house to do comedy. And then there mm -hmm. was like all these like pedophilia jokes that someone made. And then uh, Conan said something like, well, well, how long did that last? And then Albert Brooks said until he came. Mm. And it made me laugh. And I I didn't deliver it right. No, no. But what's what's great about that is Albert didn't know the question was coming. No, he didn't. No. Pun not intended. I never take credit for a pun that being intended. Okay. That's a good that's good. Still can't believe it's just fifteen bucks a month. So I'm on the website and I'm choosing to activate with an eSIM and choose my phone type. Uh, connect to Wi-Fi and download the Mint Mobile app. Let me do that real quick. I'm gonna list things that are more than 15 bucks a month. App, downloaded. I mean, that's less than a movie ticket. Select keep your current one to bring your phone number to Mint. No, I want to do a different phone number because I'm just I'm just trying this out. You can do a separate phone number on yeah. it. Yeah. Food truck last night cost more than 15 bucks. Activate SIM. It's 22 dollars. Five gigabytes a month. Great. Select brand. Apple. Simple. Select model. iPhone. Bowling. Add to cart and then save a fox ton on your wireless bill. I guess the fox is their mascot. Kind of like oh, how we yeah. a goblin. All right, there it is. Hello? Hello? Fuck yeah, dude. I have my own number. It's that simple. Because normally it's $15 a month, but this plan lets you get three months of unlimited if you use my code TISO. I bought a stuffed animal for my, my niece. It costs nineteen dollars. So to get this new customer offer and your three month unlimited wireless plan for just fifteen bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash Tyso. That's mintmobile.com slash Tyso. Cut your wireless bill to fifteen bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Tyso. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Let's give this a try, shall we? Sure. Hey, what's up? Who's this? Uh, oh, pardon me. I have a new number. Thanks, Mint Mobile. Uh, Rick Glassman of Glassman, Glassman, and Glassman. Stand-up comedy special director Brent Morin is here. Did you know that Brent directed a special recently? Oh, yeah. And yeah, this... he, he directed my special. That's right. Jason Collings. We'll put up a big thing now. At the end of the day, when you heard your father's car pull up into the driveway, if you didn't get scared, <laughs> he didn't do a good job as a father. He was... I can't tell you how many times I've been driving home, and the closer I get to my house, I'm like, I'm going to fuck these kids up when I walk <laughs> Hey, everything's so crystal clear on this phone call. Oh, Man. well, yeah. Well, are you out in the rain? Yeah, I'm driving in the rain. The phone is so high HD that I could hear your windshield wipers, mm -hmm. and they're not bothering me at all. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Jason, tell me, tell, tell, tell everybody about the special, where they could rent it, where they could buy it. It is available now on Amazon Prime. You can Good rent network. Or buy it there. I uh, shot it in Nashville. My buddy there, Brent Moore, directed it. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy with it. We're getting nothing but positive feedback. Yep. Well, Jason, have a good show. Be careful in the rain. Uh, unfortunately, the weather isn't as clear for you as the cell service is for me. That's right. Visit mintmobile.com slash Tyso. See? Yeah, all right. I don't know. 
think Jason just got into an accident. <laughs> oh, okay. You're good. You're good. Okay, good. All right, Jason. Have a good show. Talk to you soon. And Mazel Tov on shooting your own special and somehow finding a way to get it onto an actual streamer. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Oh, God. Love you guys. All right. Okay. Back to the episode. Some people like puns. I love puns, and I often intend them, but oh. I will not say pun intended if I discovered it after the fact. But you don't do people say pun intended all the time. Your is that your AC, or is that your alarm? Alarm. Do you use your alarm? Mm-hmm. Good, that's good. When you sleep, yeah, you got to do the stay feature. When I leave too, yeah, yeah, you got to. So, have so the difference between staying away if you don't have pets or send is it doesn't matter. Well, stay is when you're inside. Yeah, at night. And leave, leave adds stuff with sensors, but there's no, yeah. uh, at the moment, unfortunately, I don't have cats or dogs running around to tip the sensors. Well, you want cats and dogs? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Why don't you get like a cat? Yeah, I might. Because a dog might be cumbersome. Yes, pun not intended. Yeah. Yeah. What? Come. Come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so. So Albert Brooks says a little thing. Conan yeah, it, says a thing back and then Albert Brooks has a joke. Yeah. That repartee with that level of of funny yeah. and comfortable um, is the top of the top to me. You know what's funny is, did you grow up with Albert Brooks and stuff? Because you, you're, you're Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and also not realizing the movies I grew up with with, with, with the Reiners. But yes, that being said, I don't feel like it influenced my comedy. Yeah. What I do think it did, it it reinforced my love for Jewish energy. Yes. I get that. And just a comfort of just self-deprecating it it, uh, from a place of, of both unease and maybe unhappiness, but also from a place of love, like connect, like there's a reason there's a reason you're complaining about the way you feel and look. It's because it's because it's a, la- it's a love language. Like huh. you're connecting with like, Oh, I know. Oh, I know. And I feel this way. Oh, I know. But this it's like, Oh, oh. and it's uh, there's a lot of different types of self deprecating. I think some comes from a place of true loathing, which does exist there. Oh. Some comes to a place from very, very like, I think Conan does it because uh, I think Conan does it as a trope. But well, I the think Irish, I think, are very similar. Yeah, but it, because it comes from a real thing, but comedy-wise. Yeah, that's true. Like, Conan, Conan will deliver it and go, <laughs> after. Yeah. Uh, a Jew will deliver it and then, like, look away. Oh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But Does it help with your insecurities? Who's that? Who's talking to you? Who's calling you? Speaking of which, it says healthcare. Oh my God, healthcare called me. Is this by any chance my podiatrist? Oh, geez. It is my podiatrist. That's funny that you say that because <laughs> I'm recording a podcast now talking about what it means to be a Jew <laughs> and my podiatrist calls me. So pun not intended. So is this, uh, so, um, you know, uh, I've been phone tagging for a week. I got to take this. Take uh, so I need Please. another pair of my custom orthotics yes. for this television show that I'm on. Yes. And um, I know that insurance only covers one pair, but I've convinced the higher ups to pay for a pair Hello. Uh, for my character shoes. So uh, how do I go about ordering a pair and uh, I'll invoice it? That would be okay if you don't mind emailing. Um, the only reason why we don't really do it that way was is because we don't want to have patient information going back and forth. And email. yeah, if if the information is just about the arch of my foot and payment, I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm okay with Google having that information, but just don't okay, talk about then, my uh, my social security number or my penis size or no, anything no, no, that might embarrass me. Uh, uh, you won't mention my um, cock, correct? The email that I have on file for you is bleep that. That is right. And when do you think they'll be made? And uh, do you think that I little think penises is a fetish or something people like? Right now, because of the holidays, the line will be closed during the Christmas and New Year's. Oh, um, whoa. I need, I, I, I do need them, yes. them soon. What do you think the soonest we could have them made is? And again, reminder, don't, don't, don't okay, talk about my, my penis or anything. My friend is mentioning if we can go ahead and if you can email her. Yes. Um, what is the email? A N K L E or E L? A N K L E. That yeah, that's just checking that you if you knew. All right. Well, go ahead and get in contact with you, and we'll go ahead and take 
take care of whatever you need, okay? All right. Happy holidays. Penis fart boogers come. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Bye. It's a, the mute game I do. <laughs> and I'll tell you something. I do it all the time when I'm with a friend. And everybody is like, oh, no. Oh, what, what, you're you're going to get in trouble. I've never missed. Really? Never made a mistake with it. I. It took me a while to realize you were muting yourself. Yeah. I yeah. thought you were actually talking about your penis to this lady and she was just purposely ignoring no, you. No, no, no. That would be disrespectful. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad you got your orthotics. I heard, <clears throat> you know. Uh, yeah, orthotics are the arch support. Yeah, but I thought you also needed shoes that have that. Maybe I'm wrong. I've, I haven't been to a podiatrist, although I need to. I got a guy. You Do you really? Yeah. Where? Um, unfortunately, he's in Santa Monica. You know, but you don't I have to keep going. Do it you just go much. once. I know, but now all of my doctors are in Pasadena. Sure. I don't go more than 15. Then find a podiatrist there, but you know what was cool about this? Huh? You take off your shoes, they take a phone with a camera, with their whatever app it is, they just take a picture like this. That's it. And then. They build it exactly as you need, custom to each foot. That's and, very cool. Yeah. How long have you been wearing orthotics? Five plus years, maybe I, more. I heard it's a game changer. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know enough yeah. to be like, I don't remember. Yeah. I just make sure I always use them. And I do know that when I don't have them, and it's why I'm asking them for, them for my shoes. So last year they wouldn't get them for me. And... Uh, I didn't want to keep taking them out of my shoe and into theirs because you change shoes so often. And I just felt like it messes up the integrity of it. Oh. Like you keep bending it and taking and doing. So I leave them in my main shoes. Yeah. And then if I wear a pair of shoes out, out at a show or something or out for a couple hours, I won't have my orthotics in it. But my everyday ones I do. And this year we're season two. I'm like, guys. Guys. Last year with the shoes, I'm very sensitive to a lot of things I wear. Yeah. And... um. I just was uncomfortable all the time. And some some shoes are just uncomfortable anyway. I just don't like them, but it's for the character or whatever. And I would not wear them until we're starting to film. So I would not wear my shoes during rehearsal. We put the shoes on. And then if we're ever doing shots that are close-ups, I would always find out. And I, I would not be wearing my shoes. So a little BTS, if you're right. watching a shot of me on that show from season one and you see from waist up... I'm not wearing the same. Sh yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That is yeah. really exciting. BTS. Um, Here's my question. Your character on your show is very like neat. Is that. Did they know that you are that? That I'm what? You're neat. Um, You're very particular. He's very particular. They, so that was written already. It's part of why they they wanted me. I think the character was already written, and they liked me from being neat. And they knew that about you. Well, I mean, I maybe three weeks before I got the email, I put out in Variety how neat I am. Oh, you put it in the trades. That was smart. That was smart. and uh, but then like there's some things like. They say like uh, his the character uh, he puts down you know plastic on the couch or something whenever she eats and I'm like people that put plastic on the couch they will leave it on the couch they're not going to do this for eating I put blankets down on the couch so like they changed it to blanket so it's okay. like they already had the character but then there are, there are things here and there. Do you ever take these blankets off? Yeah, I wash I uh, I wash it um, not after every guest sometimes after I guess but after one or two. No, but like. To show off your your couch. I don't show off my couch. I'm not. Nobody knows what this couch looks like. Like, you know, besides sure they you. Guess. They could see the uh, where the blanket isn't on from the wide cam. Yeah, but it's a nice couch. So why, why don't you want to sh show off your couch? What I'm not gaining in letting people see my couch, I am in putting on clean indoor clothes after a shower and sitting on the couch without a blanket. So you take it off when you're having alone time. I put, when it's it, Rick I put time. it down for the podcast. Okay. So when it's Rick time, or there's no blanket. Over. Right. If a friend comes over, unless, yes. Okay. If a friend comes over, unless they have indoor clothes here. Yeah. Which, which is, you know, not that common. We used, to, I grew up, we had a couch cover that my mom kept on all the time. And then it only came off when for we had. Occasions. Occasions. Yeah. Yeah. I always found that interesting i don't love it you i don't know, love that i'm like this i um it's, it's, so i get it you know i have a couch and my kids drew on it with pen 
and I can't get pen off of my leather couch. And so now I'm like, I wish I had a cover on this couch. The, the gay, the gay one, or both of them? Both of them, the gay one and the other one. They both they wrote on my couch. I like that. I like referring to straight as the other. Let them get a little taste. <laughs> you might be straight. Who knows? No. Who knows? Like he the could one be who swallowed. Else. The one of them's gay. Okay, don't say swallow. He's two and a half. The one don't with the do lisp. the swallowing thing. Okay, his lisp is fine, but like it's t- it's. I meant too he just early. swallows heavy. I I truly was not making a Rick. sexual. I'm telling you the truth. I was not thinking anything sexual. Yeah. Honest to goodness. But okay, it felt like it felt like earlier too. It felt a little you, sexual. Donald Trump, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing right now? What is what is this? This is. Well, when someone goes like this, you go like this. <laughs> uh, you're penetrating it. Yeah. You're pew pew. Do you think you've become a better podcaster from doing what you've been doing? What have you learned? No, I don't. I really don't. I don't know if I've gotten better. I don't know. I think that I um What is what's a good podcaster? Uh authentic? Sure. Uh instincts of when to talk, when not to. Uh curiosity? Yes. Uh finding ways of getting your curiosity answered. I think that I'm unique in that this is your podcast. It's the Rick show. I appreciate you saying that, but this podcast doesn't exist without you. And by you, I mean a guest. Oh, okay. But it is, it's driven by you. Our podcast is driven by Conan. And so we just, you know, get to sit along for the ride. It's very easy uh, analogies. It's very easy when you're painting with Michelangelo and all you have to do is give him some paintbrushes every once in a while and you look good. I have an analogy. Yeah. That involves Picasso. Okay. Something I said to, to my mom once. I said a joke, funny joke. You know me. Yeah. And Very my joking. mom loved the joke and she was telling a friend and I was watching her tell a friend and it was just, what are you doing? That's not, don't credit really, me that. Does your mom think everything you do no, is funny? No, but a lot. And she's right. But I would like to give the analogy. <laughs> okay. It was, I feel like my mom, I feel like I'm Picasso. Oh, okay. And my mom loved this painting I made. And she wanted to share it with a friend of hers. So she took the painting and she she scraped the paint off, right? And then she brought it to her friend and she threw the paint on the easel there and said, look what my son made. And it's like, those are the colors. That was the idea. But that's not the Can art. I fix your analogy? Yeah. Because I don't think she took your painting and removed everything. Because it still existed in its place. I think she bought another canvas and she tried to replicate it, use the wrong colors, the wrong technique. Don't talk about my mom like that. She used the right colors. They were the oh. right colors. Well, no, I'd sound, I feel like she used the wrong colors. She I'm used sorry. the right words, but she didn't hit the beats in order. Yeah. She added some stuff that didn't need to be there. She uh, added some stuff. Your mom sucks. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. No, Rick. Whatever you're doing, don't do it. <laughs> my mom texted me. I love I love your mom. I know I mean, you're joking. Yeah, I know. yeah, okay, good. She texted me. She said, sorry, I blew it on your podcast. Oh, no, she didn't, though. Of course not. Why would she think that she I blew think it? it? I think because I, I just, I normally when we call her, it's longer. And I think I cut it short just because it kept going in and out. Oh. But also, I'm sure she's a little, little playful. But that's also what I'm talking about, about the Jewish thing. Not in the guilt version. Just, oh, I fucking blew it. No, you didn't. Nah, it's fine. I'm sure I did good a little bit, but a little blowing it. Yeah, maybe. But everybody's insecure. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. But I'm saying there's, there's different versions. There's some cultural versions where you use that insecurity in different ways. Some, it's shame. Some yeah. don't want to talk about it. Some, it, it causes an embarrassment. Um, some in the Jewish culture, so I find um, holding it in would make it a lot worse. So talking about it is... In a in a positive way, because I also think there there could be some self loathing yeah. in any culture, any person. But I do believe part of it is, at least for me, um, it's part of the road to acceptance. Complain about it, say about it, let it out, let it out. Just oh, this isn't really good. No, that's not good. It's not good. And it is, I look at pictures of me, and I, I go, I'm not happy with them. Yeah. Why? 
I don't look. I, this, I, I don't know how many angles but I have. Your mom said it. You're the handsomest boy. My mom somehow. I don't know if it's her height or how far apart we are from one another. She always sees me at the right angle. I guess. <laughs> And I mean that literally and metaphorically. She sees you with with from her mom angle. Yeah, but I'm you're saying you're the handsomest boy. Do you see pictures of yourself and sometimes you're like, oh, this looks good. I don't really look this good. And then usually it's like, uh, yeah. Does but it I bother think you? That's everybody. No. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. It does bother some people. But you're also you're a, a public persona. It doesn't bother me. You're oh, it doesn't no, bother you. It would bother me if I didn't accept it. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna look. People take pictures and they're like, oh, let me see. I go, I, no, no, no. We got the picture. Yeah. What are we going to see? I'm not going to be happy with it. The picture isn't about me looking good. The picture is about capturing a moment. I could accept that. Move is that on. why you use a picture of David Schwimmer as your as your headshot? No, that was just a fun joke. It is a really funny yeah. joke. I like that joke. I think, though, by complaining and being self-deprecating, uh, the, uh, there's pros and cons, but the, a big pro is you're just getting it out there. Remove the shame. Remo- yeah. the, and with shame being removed, it's easier to not be embarrassed. Do you get excited when someone you really like turns out to be Jewish? Because as an Armenian, I get so excited if I hear they're even slightly Armenian, which I, is not very often. Because you could tell that they're Armenian? Or no, you because don't there's know not many. many of us. I mean, Cher. Cher is a halfie. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll take Cher. Shout out to what? Uh, Tom Bates, who does the animation for this podcast, who I who I met for the first time recently. We've been working together for years, and he came to Los Angeles. We did like a a, a, a Tyso retreat, and, and uh, had him come here. And we went to comedy shows, and we went we went and we stayed at uh, a, a, on the beach for a couple of days, and oh, that's it was nice. really fun. Uh, and found out, did not know this, that his mom uh, was is a share 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 impersonator slash cover music like she would perform share songs a share get at, you know shares my white whale like everybody is like who do you want to me on the podcast and i say share because the armenian culture well that's part of it you know i mean but also she's an icon and the fact that she is half armenian makes it more exciting for What's me. the other half i think she's it's just white right any kind of white it's it's is there k- kinds of white? Yeah, I mean, I like There's European. Conan and I are both white, but completely different. Well, cultures. I'm technically white too, but I, you know, I check the other box. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're all white to me. You're all white. Okay, you're I like you're it. all white. Yeah, I like it. Pun but, intended. Uh, very much so. Yeah. Even there, I meant it. And I didn't need to brag about it. No. Do you love or like the movie Burlesque? I. <clears throat> haven't I haven't seen I know I'm just talking about how much I love Sharon I haven't seen burlesque it's very, you know what let's watch it real quick okay one hour and 59 minutes later it's a really good movie very very good I've yeah. watched it many times w- w- many times three that's a that's a that's a lot yeah I mean I bet you nobody I know that I'm friend nobody that I've had lunch with this year yeah. has seen burlesque as much as me I think that that's a safe assumption especially since it's january in 2023 okay nobody in 2023 okay <laughs> it's a feel-good movie is it yeah christina aguilera is doing her thing nobody knows what her th- how good her thing is she's I just know. trying to get an opportunity then some crazy uh, no spoiler on purpose some stuff happens and oh no the show's r- ruined wait a minute she she could sing she could sing like that. Yeah. She knows the choreography. She's doing it. And then the hot bartender guy who's, dude. Is he? And, yeah, who is it? I don't know his name, but I'll tell you something. Squint acting is really corny to me. You oh. know, like like hot guys are always squinting and they're doing, they're rolling a booger on the fingers. I hate it. This guy could squint act. Like, uh, like Luke Perry. Like Dylan from 90210. I didn't watch, but I believe you. Yeah, he was a squinter. And uh, I did not hate it. I don't hate it. His name is Cam Giganandant. G-I-G-A-N-E-T. Here's a great squint picture. Let me see it. Let me see that squint. I want to see that sweet ass squint. Yeah, I see it. He's he's okay. He's nice. He seems nice. Oh, that's not for you? I like my boys with a little bit of flavor. Um describe that. Uh because Give him some facial hair. Like, I I really think, I mean, I think Henry Cavill might be one of the most perfect people. Um, And it's it's interesting that you brought him up earlier. 
Yes, Joe yes. Manganiello, he's part Armenian. Oh. Yeah. Had him on the pod. Did you? And uh, I had met him on the pod. I didn't know him before. Is he solid? Yeah. Oh, man. Did, a, you, did, you, did you touch it? No. Okay. But I had a great bit with him. Oh, yeah? Where uh, um, Betty, you yeah. remember Betty? Oh, I do. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 an ex-girlfriend of mine was here. And oh, I had she was here for that episode, huh? Um, that a girl. <laughs> and uh, but she was upstairs, and I had a desk that I needed to bring down. And Joe was spending a lot of time talking about how he um, he's very uh, chivalrous oh. in a way that some some of it is nice, and some we kind of maybe I'll call it debated the uh, inefficiencies of. Oh, um, I didn't think it was necessary to hold the hand to walk her to her side of the car when she was walking on rocks. Because I have oh. never been with somebody who was falling down on rocks. <laughs> but he's like, just in case, you know, like, but whatever. But we're talking about chivalry. And, and then I said, well, I have a desk upstairs that um, I need to move. And I don't want to have to do it with my girlfriend. Would you help? And he was uncertain of like that because he just met me kind of. And he comes into my house. He goes, yeah, I guess that's OK. Um, as long as like because he had had his dog with him. As long as I don't like I'm like, yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, and then it cuts to. um would you help bring that desk down so I don't have to make me and my girlfriend do it? Um, sure. Yeah, as long as somebody holds the chihuahua. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go. Okay, Gina, out of 10. Doing great. Hey, wait. baby, we're going to hit the thing. Wait, 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 put it down. Got it? Yep. All right. Ready? And how you doing space-wise? I'm good. You're good? Oh, <laughs> my God. Doing great. Oh, Bubbles, I'm sorry. Thanks for doing this. I didn't feel comfortable doing it alone with Betty. Huh? Oh. <laughs> and it was such a fun, fun bit because <laughs> I, he I was so that. unsure, but he also was nice to help. And then there was the then then he's like, oh, oh that's really funny. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. He's, he's a nice guy. He seems it. Oh, he is. He's real nice. You know, I've been a, not a, a intentionally avoiding, Ooh. but I think avoiding a bit of a friendship with him because he's invited me numerous times and I want to, but I don't. He plays magic. I love yeah. magic, but he yeah, plays it. In, that's right. But he plays something called Commander, which is a format that I don't know how to play. I'm sure it'll be easy. It's the same rules. It's just a different deck, basically. Oh, but I don't have a Commander deck. And he goes, you could use one of mine. But I, I just want to play type one the way that I used to play. Uh, he doesn't I, do your type. Most people don't. Most people don't play that anymore. Mo the, Why? <sighs> you know what? It's OK. But, I, I don't want to say that to be rude. No, it's but it'll fine. it'll actually just go in one ear and out the other. Understood. But I don't want to yuck your yum. That, I think it's great, uh, but we're good. If more people <laughs> could say I'm not interested, yeah. but I do love that you know how to do it. Oh, like when there's games with lots of cards, mm. the magics, the pokes, mm. Pokemon's. You're talking about the oh, I thought you were talking cards. about the fish bowls. With the pokes, right. the ahi ones. Uh -huh. Ahi. There's an old Jewish joke that goes, ah, that made me think of ahi. You know that joke? It's, isn't it from uh, Coming to in, America? In. I don't believe it's from. Really? I can't. It feels too it feels too old, borscht belty Jewish. For real? I don't know this. It's my own assumption, and I would put money on it. I would love it if the thing that is very tied to Jewishness came from a man who was black, Playing a Jewish playing man. Playing a Jewish man. If I ever had Eddie Murphy on my podcast, have you ever had him on? No. If no, you I ever haven't. do and you remember. Okay. Um, I would like that that question to be asked. Yeah. And I would like it to be framed like this. I had a conversation with one of the funniest comics I know, Rick Glassman. You got to oh, do his podcast. Wow. Your version of that. Okay. Okay. What would your version of that be? Uh, My friend Rick and I were talking. <laughs> Say Glassman. <laughs> And you got a deal. <laughs> Say Glassman, you got a deal. My friend Rick Glassman and I were talking on his podcast. You don't even, take your shoes off, which Tyso. You, you got to do. Um, and and, and the, I would because that's something I would ask him. Um, yeah. Do you remember the joke for the people that maybe don't know what we're talking about? What do you mean from the from the movie? Yeah, I know it from the movie. Where I I don't remember the joke. I just remember that. Aha. Yeah. Um, guy goes and gets a gets a, a bowl of soup, uh, and it comes. Uh, he sets it down. And uh, the uh, the waiter says, how is everything? And he goes, well, will you try the soup? He goes, is there a problem? Just please, just try the soup. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? I'm just asking you to try the soup, please. And then the waiter goes, okay, fine. Where's the spoon? And he goes, uh-huh. Oh. 
<laughs> Did he play a convincing Jewish person? Yeah, everything he does is it's uh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. I um I like him a lot. Who are your I people? Think he's good. Who are your people on the pod <laughs> that that uh, you haven't had share yet? But that's like. Your, whoa that i did a whoa yeah oh we've had so many i think when arnold schwarzenegger came in because he's somebody who's like are you a real person yeah isn't it you know what that i mean was a good one yeah can I, can I tell you something yeah um i don't know if it's because if it's next week or the week after this month i think uh i have arnold on get the fuck he's coming here he uh we yes oh my god rick that's pretty amazing yeah that's huge. Very, very excited. That is a huge one because he is uh, kind of larger than life as a, you know, like some people are actors and you look at them and you're like, you're an actor. I, you know, you that's you're really good at it. And it's amazing. But for him, for some reason, there's something about him that he's just like, he's been my he's been my number one since before Will Smith. He, it's can I show you something impressive. First of all, do you still want Will Smith? want him like would you still have him on the podcast you know that we've had him i had i recorded right when i was starting this podcast i recorded something i saw him at my at my th then uh, agency i met him years ago in college i don't know what he was i i've told this story before already but basically okay. in college i almost rolled a perfect game okay. i had ten, 10 strikes in a row is two away from a game the oh, whole bowling bowling yes okay. the whole everybody like the whole bowling was coming over so, Will Smith was in in Akron. In uh, I went to Kent State. He was there for something. He was at the bowling alley. It was an amazing thing. I met him. We talked for not even a minute. It was just like that was awesome. Blah 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 blah. Years later, I saw him uh, at CAA, and I said hi, and he's waved, and I said I'm the the, the guy who almost bowled the perfect game. He immediately knew. He goes, Oh my god. We talked for a second. I was filming something. We did something that was going to be a podcast. It was not even thirty minutes worth, but we did it, and he didn't have time. And I said, We'll do a two parter thing. He would do it again. We had to do a second part. It's been four years, yeah, more than we haven't done. But I'm waiting to put out until we do the second part. Why can't you just put out the first part? I've been thinking about it, but I might at some point. I might. I, you went to Kent State, yeah. I didn't know that. But I want to show you something impressive. M O V S E S I A N. Yeah. Mosesian. That is impressive. Watch this. S C H W A R Z E N E G G E R. That's also impressive. And I think you spelled it I right. I did. I would not know. Okay. I didn't even know how to spell ankle. Yeah, you didn't. So I just had uh, uh, Jay Leno had a jaywalking segment. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, can we talk about that? Oh, yeah. And uh, he would go on the street and ask people. If they could spell Schwarzenegger, he'll buy them a house. And I don't know if you really would or not. I don't know if they edited out the ones where they did, but nobody could spell it right. And it was like yeah. this thing. And I'm like, if I, I had posters of him everywhere. And I'm just, I'm, I, so I memorized how to spell Schwarzenegger. If in case that ever happens, uh, I want to know yeah, how to do it. In case Jay Leno ever mm -hmm. came to you with, an, uh, with a microphone and asked you to spell it so you could get a house. And I, because it's hard to remember, I would look at it all the time to make sure. And compulsively to this day, I bet you at least once a month, if not more, I I check in to make sure I could like I still see it. -E -E he ruined your life. Ruined? Yeah. How so? Because this is something you have to think about now all the time. Get to think about. I get and to think about. I'm him. sorry. He's even if you did meet him and you did spell right. He's not my house. You know, I did meet him recently at. Um, remember, I told you uh, uh, I flew my friend Tom in uh, to yeah, experience yeah, yeah. Los Angeles while he was here was. Uh, part of the improv 60th anniversary party. Oh, cool. So we went to that and Jay Leno was there. How, uh, where is, where is Tom? England. England. Oh, I forgot you could do that. Jolly old England. Hello, this is Queen Elizabeth. I want to tell you all about one river podcast. It's called Kevin O'Brien. Please listen to me. I've never been on it, but I heard it's really no. good. When I said keep going, I meant like, Let's continue on with oh. the podcast. <laughs> R.I.P. Oh. She died. I thought you were talking about the Balcony series, doing my podcast on the Balcony. That too. Why don't you do that anymore? That was because when I was just scared of everything. Oh, okay. You're not, but you still are. I'm scared of a lot. Oh, okay. I'm not scared of this. All right. That's good. I'm glad. Yeah. This is nice. This the OCD is cozy. got real bad during those days. Well, understandably. You know, I think it did for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot happened. A lot of people died. 
So every time you come on this podcast, it wouldn't be you coming on the podcast. It's it's now your fifth time without me tr- watering that seed about somehow me getting Conan. I know. So at some point, I, I know at some point it'll happen. I think honestly, now that you've had like, you've had like Bill Burr on, you've had Kristen Bell, you've had a lot of really big people. Joe Maganello. Joe Maganello. Um, wrote a hit song with Megan Trainer. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time, well, in a couple of weeks, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What do I, uh, uh, Dax Shepard, big podcast, big podcaster there. Huge. Yeah. That could maybe help. I could maybe help Conan's numbers. Huh? You know that you could help Conan's numbers. Yeah. Because Conan, you guys don't have a huge YouTube following and there are people on YouTube who don't listen to podcasts. If it's not on YouTube, I noticed that. But once they find something on YouTube and they like it, they'll go over and listen. Is it a podcast still or is it a yes. YouTube show? Podcast, both film, film and recording. Okay. You could watch the podcast. You could listen. Is it a book if it's a book on tape? Come on. Yeah. I'm an analogy guy. It's an audio book. Yeah. But they have a very specific word for it. They don't say. It's an audio what? Audio book. Right. So it's a video podcast. Video podcast. Versus an audio only podcast. Because okay. a video podcast also is audio. So I could introduce a lot. of Listen. Yeah, you, did. you could do a lot. Y- you know. I-, I think you two would have a really fun conversation. I do too. If it were up to me. Yeah. But you, you know, he gets asked all the time and that's the problem. Let me sell you on. And he's a really busy. He's more busy now than he was when he had his show. I will say that. Why? I I think because he's more open to trying a lot of things. Like he was in the Please Don't Destroy movie, you know? Okay. Uh, He's, he, um, if he. Does he live in a place that's not too far away from here? He lives. Meaning. Every showrunner I've had. Um, or NBA athlete I'm friends with lives there. <laughs> or NBA, any NBA, what a, what a brag you just did. Well, any s- showrunner I've had or any NBA friend I have. You got me. But the point I'm making is people who are like very successful yeah. live there. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I, sure. Especially with a family. Cause if that's like where I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm stationed. Yeah. But it's just a schlep. It's not only a schlep, it, your friends won't come to you very often. I lived in Santa Monica for two and a half years. I had to make new friends in yeah. Santa Monica. Yeah. But what a life, man. That hey. was nice. I wanted, that was I, nice. I wanted, having Conan on, it would be hella bits. But like, I have I have real questions. I, 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 I want it. I want. He loves you. Does he love me or does he like me? He likes you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Enough to do my pod? Love is such a strong word. I don't want to speak on his behalf, but I know he likes you and, you know, he I likes you I would rather him come on my podcast than me come on yours. That's not true. It is true. I don't think that's true. Okay. I could tell you pros and cons of both. Please. Tell me pros and cons of both. Of what? Of both? Well, I think a big pro of ours is it's a really big podcast. Right. I'm not looking to have him on for exposure or for numbers. Uh-huh. I want to have him and and me on his podcast would be great and I would I would love it. I would fucking love it. Yeah. Excuse me, me on y'all, y'all's podcast. Not his. Um I think of it as yours too. But yes, it's the Conan is a friend podcast. Yeah. And he would be in control and that would be fun. Um and I'm sure he would, there would be a lot of control that he would want to have or need to have here too. But the difference would be Having on mine, I get to ask him the things that I want as opposed to him asking me the things. Yes. The play would be both on either. I, since I was a kid, would have wanted him on a couch where I could ask him questions, even if nobody watched it. Okay. If he would come over. You just want to hang out with him. I want to hang out with him and I want to hang out with him in an interview sense where we get to play and do bits. And also I would want to be able to do the fun edit stuff. But also like I would want to, I would want to... pull up multiple clips that and like talk about and the intention and the instincts and and I don't know if you'd be willing to admit but he is the best at saving people yes where I don't know how much people that aren't in this business or don't care enough to pay attention to recognize the difference between Conan making a joke and Conan saving somebody because oh, he's that good 100%. at hundred percent I, I I will say that as someone who's on his podcast with him you know, we do. We did two shows at uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music recently at BAM. I think there's like 2,500 people that could be there um, for each show, mm-hmm. and uh, we we did the show and it was fun. And I realized the reason I don't get nervous is because I have a Conan net. 
Yeah, of course. I could say the stupidest things, and I do. I do. And I know I'm going to be okay because I just land on that cone in net, and he just saves me. Could Every you give single an example time. of a time that he saved you? Um, if no, it's, I if don't it's not remember a anything. Example, could you give me an example of a feeling? <laughs> yeah, I think that, well, those live shows, you know, there's like thousands of people looking at you. 2,500. Yeah, those thousands. It's plural. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's things that I've said, and you could hear like thunk. You could actually hear a thunk. And then he picks it up and then he will do something with by it. either making fun it. of you or doing by it again either himself. making it fun of me or finding something funny in what I said and then making that into like his thing and it just becoming a yeah. really funny. It's thing. that's one of his superpowers. Yeah, he's really good at that. Um, that skill set that I that device is something that I also use and probably not inspired developed because of him yeah um not saying i'm as good at it but just that thing that has helped me so much interpersonally like if something feels uncomfortable the confidence to acknowledge it because you get to make it funny whether or not i make it funny or it was worth acknowledging isn't the argument i want to make now but just knowing i feel for better for right or wrong confident enough to like speak up for my feelings yeah okay oh that's i don't like do you think you've gotten better at podcasting since you started well yeah 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 but what he's able to do he's able to uh he's able to say what's on his mind because he does it efficiently and funny yeah and uh that's i think i'm sure there's other people i've noticed do it but that's like as a kid i remember seeing that i remember like oh he could say he could say whatever he wants yeah it's not no filter. It's the filter of like his voice. And I, I would love to pull up interviews. And I don't even know if YouTube will flag it. I don't know how it would work. So we would not show. Him. I want to pull up interviews and like ask him, when did you notice? Because I know what he did. I'm not like, what did you do here? It's why? When did you notice it? What would have happened if you didn't? I I want like. I don't think break anyone's gotten that like deep with him about that. I would get so deep with him. You get so deep. I would. And I would need it. You'd be elbow deep. Yeah. Good morning to the Glassman party. My name is Karina. How may I assist you? Karina, first, it's Dr. Glassman. And second, how are you? I'm good. And you, Dr. Glassman? Well, you know, uh, the Vegas for the weekend, getting away from the wife and kids and, of course, all the surgeries. I'm a doctor. We got to get home tomorrow because I got an early call. Knee deep inside this 13-year-old boy. But what I was wondering is, since I don't have to be home until the evening, maybe we could sleep in. Doctor needs his rest. Do you think we could check out around 5 p.m.? Dr. Glassman, I do apologize. We cannot extend anything beyond our standard check of time of 12 p.m. I hear you. i uh, wonder if you hear me. Maybe this will change your mind. I'm putting a $20 bill on the phone. <laughs> I do apologize, Dr. Hold on. Please say nothing more. I put another five on there. I won't tell anybody. You don't need to tell anybody. I get to leave at 1230. I'm looking for a half hour. 1230. Let's see, Dr. You got it. Dr. Glassman? Do you have Dr. Glassman? Yes. So I was able to go ahead and secure a 1230. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You have a good night. Dr. Glassman. Thank you. You as well. Only in Vegas. I have a fisting video if you need it. Of what? Of a person fisting someone. We... So my friends and I found this video when we. How would Conan save you right now? <laughs> he would just watch. Uh, yeah, he would. But you know how he would do it? He would exaggerate him watching. So if he was going to be quiet, he wouldn't do it physically. He would be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, man, he's the best. You got to get him over here. There is a video. This man is fully, fully clothed. And he is fisting a, a young woman who is hoisted over his shoulder and she's naked from the waist down. Do you have it on your phone? I don't. I don't. And it's funny you ask that because I did bookmark it once because I did like my friends and I. And I'm, I'm, I'm being very honest when I say this. It wasn't something we watched for pleasure or that I went home and watched alone. We were fascinated by it. So to be clear, you would only watch this fisting video with other people. With other people. Exactly. And it was, uh, I, I don't even know how to find it now. I mean, I, I what do you search? What, guy fully clothed fisting a, a girl? Search it. Yeah. All right. 
do I just do it on Google or do I go to a website to look for it? I swear Google? we've we've bookmarked this somewhere. It's bookmarked on one of my phones. While you're looking it up, I'm going to fill up. Uh, Google? Oh, this is going to be my Google search. Oh, Guy fully clothed. I would think that uh, uh, over. Uh, fisting. Fist, over his shoulder. Fisting girl over shoulder. Oh, not shoulder. No, not shoulder. Shoulder deep. <gasps> Get out. Can we do that, guys? Physically, can we do that? Is that something the human body is capable of? Shoulder you, deep you, fisting. You, have you tell me the shoulder truth. elbow? I was talking about she's elbow deep. Have you honestly never been fisted at least to, sh to shoulder? You can see it. Let me see. Did, I just saw. Just Will you let shot. her show this? No, no. I can't. I cannot. Oh, no, no. There's a leg in one of them. You know, it's funny. We could take that reaction shot and put the uh, s uh, season finale of Sopranos on your phone and people would believe the reaction. It's just, I, I don't know what I expected, Rick, but it is. I already very... don't want to see any more of it. I just saw a spill. I don't I look. I saw something that looked like somebody's foot. To it the knee. was a foot. Up to the knee. It do you think that's real? Yeah, you see it. Um, you know, I do you think. Want me to send you this? Can I do a pun intended? Yeah. Uh, I think that gives a whole new meaning to somebody saying, "I need your pussy." Yeah. I need to remove this from my. Oh no! I didn't need to see that last one. <laughs> Note to self: I don't need to see that. <laughs> I scrolled a little. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I gotta delete. I, uh, <laughs> that was very uncomfortable for me. That was so Pun, not intended. The one that we used to watch was just so wholesome and fine and okay. And it was, you know, everybody was having a good time. Yeah. I miss the days where you could <sighs> fist a woman and just everybody is all in play. It's all, it's all a good time. Yeah. Um, well, I had a question for you. Do you get recognized a lot more now? Is it weird? Yeah, I have been. I have been. I have been getting. Do you recognized. get uncomfortable when someone's like, "Hey, uh, I no. saw you wink at the camera." Just to come, I just I don't want to get flagged. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, have you? Are you a Lisa flagged? Kudrow fan? I love Lisa. You've Kudrow. seen the comeback? Yes. I rewatched both seasons recently. She knows who I am because she's really good friends with Conan. So over the years, I've I've gotten to know her, and uh, I'm not close like I can call her. But when we see each other, she says hi, Sonar. I feel she like knows my name. That's um. She's 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 brilliant. Yeah, she is. She's and and she's a really really nice person. Like she's just a really 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 sweet, lovely person. Um, do you like the comeback? It's, yeah. I mean, like who doesn't? For people that don't know, and a lot of people don't, season one, two thousand five, on, idiots. Season two, two thousand fifteen, ten years apart. Both seasons brilliant. Yeah, they are fantastic, fantastic show. Yeah, it's on, it, that's on Max. It is. It's on Max. It is on Max. Is it still on Max? Mm -hmm. Remember how they took a lot of shit off? Yeah, I just watched it. Is Entourage still on there? That's how, I, that's how there? I knew. I don't want to see that. Yeah. Is Entourage still there? Mm-hmm. Okay. I watch that a lot, too. You rewatch it? I rewatch a lot. Do you, do you unironically like Entourage? I, unironically and ironically. I unironically like season one and two. Okay. Because I, I know, like, for me personally, it just kind of, like, dwindled a bit. But... I mean, those first couple seasons, those were fun. Jeremy Piven is so funny in it, too. He is so funny. Yeah. He's really funny. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I like that you have shows you go back to. What are your shows? That I go back to? Mm -hmm. um, not a lot. I, I, if I have time, I, re I watch a, a new show because I don't have as much time as I used to. Uh, babies. Neither does Conan, apparently. You said he's busier than he ever was. I was just Oh yeah. Okay. But he but yeah, I um like I rewatched Cheers and that's I that's haven't watched a enough of it. I haven't of watched it. enough of it. And that is a show I want to go through and watch. I watched that. I mean the first time I watched it was when it aired and I was really young. No. Yes. Didn't want to come out like 
in the 80s. In the 80s. I mean, I 80s. it was it was like the first grown-up show I watched with my parents. When did Cheers come out? 82, I think was the first season. Yeah. And then it went on till 92. I think 93. it was 93. So I watched um it started when I was born. I was born in 82. You don't finished. look a day over now, then. I'm 41. I know. Oh, you did math. Yeah, uh, it's easy because uh, oh, it's you 20, were giving me a compliment. Yeah, it's twenty twenty two, so forty plus the. Yeah. No, when people say something, you go, "Oh, you don't look at ever." Oh, you just because you don't want to say like an age that they'll feel bad about. I, I just don't, don't know what if if when this episode comes out, what your age will be. And we'll oh, voice, we'll voice if over you it. said to me you don't look a day over forty one, I'd be like, "Thanks." I think you look which late I don't 30s. think is is I I don't mind looking my age. I'm okay with it. Thirty eight. Yeah, I, I'm fine with thirty eight. That's three years off. 38 with great skin and nice tits. Nice Bleak tits. skin. <laughs> <laughs> nice tits. Um, what was I saying? That was good. Cheers. Okay, so I rewatched Cheers. That is 10 seasons, 24 to 25 episodes per Every season? season. I mean, that is like network. Mm. So that was a lot of work. And you know what's funny is when I met my husband, he was watching Cheers. He was rewatching the entire series. At like So you guys when you rewatched recently, did you watch together? Well, we were both watching when we were like single and then we met each other and then But you said you just rewatched it. No, I mean just in the last like 5 years. Is that not just? That's not just. You sound like um uh, Ned Stark right now. From Game of Thrones? Watched it four times. You did not. Kind of. I could explain the kind of, it's not necessary, but first time I watched gulp, it, gulp, uh, gulp, gulp, uh, season uh, five was just coming out. So that was my first watch, which mm-hmm. means I didn't see the, you know, six, seven, eight. So I didn't see six, seven, eight as much. And then I rewatched yeah. the whole thing and then watched the whole thing again and then rewatched and I'm in middle of season four now. Do you, are you as angry about the last season as a lot of people? No. Me neither. Right. Me neither. I I honestly don't under, understand I have an it. an analogy and we go back to driving. Do it. I understand why they're upset, but I don't understand the road rage. Okay. Like, yeah, I get it, but who gives a shit? Just let them in. Yeah. It's not that, whatever. I Yes, it wasn't, yes, this person went in front of you, and that's what, but like, whatever. You're on a great, you're driving to a great place, you got the windows down, enjoy it. Do you watch the new one? House of Dragon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Is it? You haven't watched. No. And you're a fan of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Bro. You know what it is? Game of Thrones was such a commitment uh-huh. and so i'm like am i ready so is everything worth doing yeah you're right you know what you're... what is that by the way your left hand next In to your here? pinky yeah what is that so i got this ring from my husband it's in, it's called an engagement ring then i lost weight i bought a coil so that i could put it on there and it wouldn't fall off right and people are like, well, why don't you just get it resized? And I know myself. If you do it twice, that's gross. That's why they say it's called recoiling. Ugh. No, that wasn't that good. It was I'm a sorry. pun. That was not but good. But it was a pun. Yeah, but. It, to recoil. I it, Just because it's a pun doesn't mean that it makes it like. Puns aren't necessarily needing to be punny. I'm okay. Sorry. <laughs> Funny. They're just there. See, you like puns more than I do. <laughs> I, I won't that's, fight you on that. Okay. So I don't get it resized because I know myself and I know I'm going to gain the weight back. The reason I, I, I feel like you will too. Uh, the oh, reason me, I me. said that though was because um, that was you. That's proof of your commitment. You made a commitment to your husband, yeah. to your family. Yeah. I'm saying anything worth doing is worth committing to. Oh, and I'm talking about that stupid coil. Yeah, that was me. What you did. And I'm magic. talking about this plastic coil. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not fast enough to like keep up with you, Rick. Well, you have a very quick each other sentences. Yeah. So, um, House of Dragon is Watch very, it. very good. What show have you rewatched the most? Entourage is up there. Okay, but it's not rewatched all the way through. It's like I'll put something on an episode on, like when my girlfriend brings her dog here. Uh-huh. Uh, and we leave and we put something on, I put on Entourage. What's that? Who's this girlfriend? Oh, my girlfriend. I don't know. I didn't know you had a girlfriend. Yeah. I don't I talk mean, about uh, personal life too much on here. I understand. We could talk about it. Um, bleep this. 
She lets you fist her. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Shoulder deep? No way! <laughs> it, no <laughs> Knee deep. Okay, you can stop bleeping. <laughs> um, but that's just entourage. <laughs> just the anger in your face. Oh, did you see anger? Yeah, I saw. Oh, I, my, I was doing like, uh, like, like, what am I doing? Like, what? Is, like, that, just think, just thinking of what I, what I saw in that picture. That was more fear. We all just saw pictures, or we, we both just saw pictures, and it was enough. The Office. I think there's nothing I've watched more than the Office. I mean, that that that's like straight through. You think, or you've just seen the episodes more often than or more season two through six. I've rewatched so many times. Uh, I have rewatched all of it. Yeah. I have watched all of them, you know, I, but uh, I usually don't watch season one. There's funny stuff. No disrespect to the season one. Yeah. But I start with season two, episode one Dundies. And isn't um, season one only like six episodes. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. You don't have a um, That's when his hair slicked back. You yeah. don't need those. Well, let's show a little respect, but okay. you know, Excuse episodes me. are um, garbage. I'm going to have Rain Wilson on in a couple months. Shut up. Yeah. Oh my God. Very that's excited. exciting. Is that the first office person you've had? Yeah. Uh, I just did his podcast oh, and it comes cool. out in a few months and yeah. he's going to come on mine when his podcast comes out. I'm, uh, that, that probably what, yeah. Do you watch, have you seen Parks and Rec too? Many times. I've rewatched a lot. Yeah. yeah that's a good one too, isn't it? Um, how do you do, like if I'm Greg Daniels and Mike Sure. How do I do that twice and make them two distinct shows? I, I, it might be a different answer but if I had to guess. If they said, guess what they would say, uh, both with honesty and humility. It would be first having a vision and a tone. Yeah. Um, this is how I, what I, how I see things. And then finding funny, funny people and funny, funny writers. Yes. And then helping say no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, until they all get what we're doing. Do you write on your show? I'd like to, but no. Why not? Why don't Why don't you ask if you can like? Uh, well, I write some stuff. Uh, I have. I've suggested. I really want to uh, start directing, uh, and Ooh. I want to direct one. But you know, this season's only gonna be ten episodes. There's not that many. You have to figure it out. I'm. I'm I've been watering the seed. Believe me. Um, but I don't want to be in the writers' room. Why? Between stand up, my podcast, working on the podcast and post. Um, uh, and and filming the television show, I just don't want to. Okay, I don't want to be in the writers' room. Um, not to sense. say I wouldn't be in a writers' room if it were my show, but I would love to do an episode, write an episode. Yeah, that sounds cool. I think you you'd be great at it. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. But I also I'm, I'm I'm aware of that means taking away an episode from somebody. And if we got full seasons, it would maybe be something that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough. What would you want to do in this business that you either haven't done a lot or that? You have not done it all. Can I be totally honest with you? If I'm not doing something with Conan, I'm probably not doing anything in this business. Remove the word business and let's replace it with art slash creative. Why? I don't know if you'd want to paint. Oh. I'm saying like what 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 creative outlet would you have and or want if it weren't for I don't Conan? think I need a creative outlet. I don't buy that. Is that true? Yeah. You at, think that? At least I mean, now that you've I really, been indoctrinated into uh, comedy. Maybe, but I, I just, I, I, I know people who need it. I've seen it and I don't, I don't think I need it okay. as much. I think. I guess as a mother, you have purpose. That's, well, the thing I think when, I, cause I've thought about this a lot. Cause so much of what I do is connected to Conan. Like everything I've done is connected to him. And I think that if he were to be abducted by aliens tomorrow and he just like didn't exist anymore. That's I, why I got to get on the pod sooner than later. You do. It's it's but go on. it's inevitable. So I think that what I I don't I my priority would be my family and making sure we made money. So instead of like chasing something else to do in entertainment, TV, podcasting, whatever, I might just go get a job somewhere nearby then and then like just do a job. You and I could do, have a podcast together if, if Conan got abducted and you needed to make a, a 200K a year. Oh, OK. I mean, yeah. and if I didn't get paid anything and the podcast was pretty successful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah, I'll do that. That sounds fun. If you Sold. Need, if you needed to get another job versus starting your own podcast, or if you could, I feel like I don't think I, I feel don't like think I want to start. Yeah, but what would you want to do for a job? I don't know. I think I could do anything. 
That's like funny not, to say you think I could do anything, but not like be an engineer, doctor. I mean, like, I think that I could if I found I mean, a podiatrist, maybe I could probably be a podiatrist. No, I, I mean, like if I could find a job where I'm like even working, I don't know if I could work in administration again because I talked. I, I have a book called The World's Worst Assistant, New York Times bestseller, but I don't think that I could after having that out and creating this persona of someone who just was like, look, work. I don't know if I could like find a normal job. So maybe I, maybe I kind of screwed myself. Hey, do you actually read books? I listen to them. Okay. I mean, you probably should have had that the whole time. It probably would have been better if that was just there during yeah. the whole New York Times bestseller. Oh. Oh, watch out. That fell. Oh, that's Rain Wilson. You could book. put something in front of it so it won't fall over. I want to get rid of this. Oh, <clears throat> Reggie Watts. Hey, his episode. Had- uh, by the time this comes out, I will have had him on. I love Reggie. Uh, and then also, I will have had on Look at that guy. There he is. I mean, these are the big two. As far as I'm concerned, these are the. There it is. These are the big ones. Yes. These are the big ones. I think it's important to just leave those up. Okay. I think it's uh I think they're like in terms of the importance they have yeah to pop culture out of all the books I have I think the people that are the most important to me are right here That's nice. Thank you for saying that. Go 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 go. This person was the most important to me as a child. Then this person became up there in the top probably 3. Um, and but out of all three of them, if I had to pick the person that's the most important to me, you know who I'd pick? Right here. Yep. I was hoping you'd say that. That's the one. I'm, I appreciate that. That's really nice. Not the most influential. I didn't expect that. And I shouldn't be. But why was Arnold Schwarzenegger so important to you when you were a kid? Kindergarten cop? Uh, I don't I loved Kindergarten cop. Mr. Kimball, are yeah. you all right? <laughs> But no, that's not what made me fall in love with him. Uh, I, the truth is, as a lot of boys of my generation, y- you just liked muscles. You wanted to get yoked like him. Maybe. But when at that age, I wasn't even thinking about I want. It was just like I looked up to him. He was cool. He felt he he he's just like the he was the coolest guy. It was a, a, what, how you look at superheroes. Well, it was like, I mean, the Terminator yeah. is one of the coolest, if not the coolest character the way he just yeah glides in and out fucking crushes shit i haven't seen the terminator in a really long time i've so. rewatched them uh, numerous times yeah. one and two do uh, you like two better like most people like two better right um probably but only because two came out when i was older and whoa and then i've, I've seen two more one is fantastic yeah um but yeah, probably two, two better. You want to know what's funny? You know Die Hard, that movie Die Hard? Have you heard of it? That's with the um, the guy from The Whole Nine Yards? Yeah. Uh, so I watched, what's the one with him and Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson? Jackson? Die Hard with a Vengeance, part Die three. Die Hard with the Vengeance. With, with a Vengeance. A, with a, yeah. a Vengeance. I said with a Vengeance, but it sounded like I said he with He didn't the say, Vengeance. hey, Zeus. He said, hey, Zeus. That one is the one that I remember coming out. And that one is the one I remember. You will remember when your son does it, but go on. Yeah. And so. What? Three, two, one. Never mind. Your son doesn't get it. Oh, okay. You don't remember remember when your son comes out of the closet. Okay. Okay. Oh, I didn't say anything. You said that's the one I remember. Coming out. out. Coming, okay, I get it. When it came out. Okay. Okay. Unintended. Okay. Now I get it. Now we're good. Um, that one I remember when it came out. Pun intended. You know who the bad guy is? No. Scar. Scar from Lion King. Mm-hmm. Scar from Lion King voiced. Yes. What's his name? I, once I hear it, we'll both at the same time go, yes. right. Yes. Yeah. Who voiced Scar from Lion King? Jeremy Irons. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. That's yeah. right. That's right. So that one came out and I was like, I remember that one. So if you had asked me at that time, what's your favorite right. Die Hard? I would have been like, Die Hard with a Vengeance, obviously. Yeah. 
you know, but it's not the best one. No, but it is great. It's fun. They're, they're, they're yeah, it, it's great. Yeah, but it's not the best one. But that's in my mind that when I think of Die Hard, I think of that Die Hard. But that's also credit to the movie because there are sequels that come out that people maybe remember better, but they know aren't better. Yeah. There are some, I feel like the Die Hards, the Terminators, the Sister X, I'm fine if anybody says whichever one is their favorite, I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Godfathers, I guess that's a bit of a cliche one, but that's true. Do you think Godfather 3 would have been good if it was, if one and two didn't exist? Probably. Probably. Still a good movie, right? There's still shit that happens. It's like, that's cool. Yeah. Give me Andy Garcia any day. Uh, Okay. How about we mix Andy Garcia in with a little bit of Brad Pitt uh, chew acting? Yeah. And we got ourselves a nice view from Santa Monica. Of course, we're talking about the oceans. Why did you say if... If he didn't look the way he looked, are you saying what's the next thing people when notice about Brad, him? When you notice Brad Pitt, you're noticing how that face his, and that body, the face first. He's 60. Is he? Yeah. 60 or 59. He's the same age as Conan. How old is Brad Pitt? Jeremy Irons. <laughs> Sona. <laughs> I thought he was born in 1963. And maybe his birthday's end of December. When is Brad Pitt's birthday? We should send him a cake. December 18th. Hey, he's going to be 60 soon. Can I tell you something? I looked up somebody last night, their birthday. Uh, Brad Pitt's birthday is December 18th. Yeah, who's the person? Um, Okay. Uh, Let me see if I can give you a hint. Yeah. The reason I looked him up was because of also how good looking he is. George Clooney? Not the same generation. Okay. New guy. Enough enough to where I'm like, oh, how old is he? Because he looks so good. So like when somebody's 29, you're not looking up how old they are. Matt Bomer. No. Paul Mescal. He's not as, he's not as, in my opinion, obscure. Okay. uh, He's a movie star. He's a movie star. Can I get one more hint? Is he in the Marvel universe? Is no, he, are we uh, talking to maybe Chris the, Hemsworth? Maybe, are maybe, we talking to Chris Pratt? Are we talking to... I'm trying to give you the hint. Okay, sorry. Chris Pratt's a great guess. Maybe, if not the, definitely in the running for best hairline in the business. Oh. Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe? Younger? Yeah, younger. Ah. Uh. Was I hot with Chris Pratt's and the Hemsworth? He's in the Chris Pratt category. Great hairline, huh? Curly hair, wavy hair, straight hair, Hugh Whatever Jackman? Whatever he wants. No. Okay. Um, uh, James Marsden? Um, I'll just pull him up. I just want to make sure it's the, it's the right birthday. Let me do this. Uh, Brad Pitt is December 18th. Yeah. When is Jake Gyllenhaal's birthday? Okay. He's 82. December 19th. 82. 80. 80? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. December 19th. Got it. Because because it's so 1980 and and I'm I'm like, oh, he's he's uh he's 43. Yeah. Um uh but uh, he wasn't. He's 42, so I'm like, oh, it must be end of December. That's what made me just think of the Brad yeah. Pitt thing. You know why I knew Brad Pitt was set 1963 cuz that's Same as Conan. Conan. Yeah. And so when we went to go watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh I remember looking at him and be like, the same age yeah. Conan? That guy's the same species as Conan. <laughs> Not to like, you know, Conan's a good looking guy, but Conan's a human. He's a human being. Yeah. Brad Pitt is good. Jake Gyllenhaal in I just watched The Covenant. Yeah. Do you know that movie on Amazon Prime? No, I haven't seen it, but I know it. Uh, it Guy Ritchie. It's really good. Is it? Yeah, I watched it last night. I watched it last night and I was doing this out loud by myself. <laughs> Oh, you know, like, yeah, um, I love having moments like that to myself. You like having them by yourself or you like that when you're by yourself, you still get to have them. I love that. I I love I love that I get to feel excitement like that when no one else is around to, like, encourage it. Does that make sense? Because that means whatever I'm watching has invoked that in me. Do you also enjoy having that? Sharing that with somebody? Sure. I like that too. But for some reason, it's just a completely, it hits different when it's like. 
Gotcha. This is my little thing. This is my little feeling. I got this on my own. It's probably more challenging as a mother now, which, by the way, so brave of you to be. But did you like to or do you like to go to movies by yourself? Because that's something I've always loved. Okay, I went through a phase where I went to movies by myself Um, when I was younger in my 20s. I don't do it now. Now it's like, if I'm going to get out of the house and I'm going to go to the movies, I'm making it a social thing with my friends. Uh, And I just don't have as much fun when I go by myself. But I remember the first movie I saw by myself was Nosferatu, the one with Willem Dafoe. So not Nosferatu, the one about making Nosferatu. Okay. Um, Yeah, I went during the day. Did you, do you go by yourself? Yeah, but I love going with friends. Um, But there are some times where like, if I'm out of the house, I like, I just don't want to go home. So like, what am I going to do? I go, I'll go to a movie. Like what's playing? You know, what's funny. I think the last time I went and saw a movie by myself was uh, I was waiting for Conan to finish something that was taking hours. I don't know if it was like an interview or something. And then I went and saw a movie by myself. What did you see? I saw Love, Simon. AMC Burbank? No, I forgot where it was. Love, I Simon. That's with uh, Nick Robinson. He's got a great face. Love, Simon movie. It's a really cute movie. I recognize the poster. I feel like I saw this. I don't remember it though. Yeah, it's a really cute movie. (laughs) Do you um, think Jake Gyllenhaal is as good looking as I think he is? I think he's a pretty tasty dish. Yeah, definitely. Uh huh. I actually think he's gotten better with age. That's. I do too. Not that he wasn't always great looking. Um, Love and other drugs. Is that the movie I'm thinking? No. Yes, with Anne Hathaway. Yeah, and uh, Josh Gad. Yes, I, I think I, I can't Great remember. Movie. Yeah, I, I um, love that movie too. But he was really good looking in that too. He was. But do you remember that movie that he was in, October Sky? I don't think I saw it, but I know it. He was really young in that movie. And I think he was supposed to be kind of dorky. Yeah. Okay. If I remember right. He can't be kind of dorky now. You know, the the, the hit YouTube um, uh, short film, I Am Phenomenal. I'm not sure if you've seen it. We have an action figure right there. I have seen it, actually, because Ins- I support my friends. Inspired by, the music was inspired by a Jake Gyllenhaal film called Southpaw. Oh, with the... Where where Eminem did uh, the song called um, F- uh, Phenomenal. Yeah. And it's Eminem. And I was listening to that song and the way the beat was coming in, I was, uh, that's where I visualized a basketball thing that I ended up not even doing, but I was picturing wanting to edit this certain thing to that song. And then I couldn't use the song. And then I thought it'd be funny. What if I just made my own song? And then that inspired me to do something different. But uh, the Phenomenal from Southpaw, great song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's fun. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. What made you think of him? What were you doing? I was watching the Covenant last night. Oh, the night. Covenant. That's why you said that. And okay. he's just and I. You believe it. You believe. It's funny when you could believe someone is tough because they're good looking. Yeah. Does that make sense? But I think people are tough when they're not yes. conventionally good looking. Absolutely. And I think toughness is an attitude. Toughness is an attitude, but I'm saying part of it is like when that's uh, so. Great segue into, did you watch the Sylvester Stallone documentary that just came out? I haven't. I didn't it's even know that Sly. happened. It's on oh. Netflix. Oh, wait, I did see it, but I didn't watch it. Are you going to get him? We haven't yet. I like, Matt, that'd Andrew. be fun. He's fantastic. Great documentary. But part of it is Schwarzenegger then talking about the back and the forth of like, Schwarzenegger said that at th- that time when Rocky and then Rambo, um, what did we end then? Yeah, Rocky was obviously first, but then Rocky kept going Rambo. They were both going, both these franchises. He's like, I was so competitive and Schwarzenegger kept like, like by the, uh, Sly would make a certain amount of money and Arnold would be like, I was, felt like I was always chasing him. By the time I got to that kind of money, he was making more. Uh. And then, and just talking about that. And then they were talking about like, back then he was very conscious of it. Back then, m- muscles, like if you're an action star, muscles sold it. You needed the muscles. So, and he would be training and he would be training. Obviously Arnold was a muscle guy first. But like the idea of just like needing to have an excuse to have your shirt off and show muscles literally translated to bigger box office movie star action. Like, yeah, that. But don't you think it's still like that? I didn't yes. mean to cut you off, but yeah. 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 But that that leads into what I'm saying. There's something about muscles, good looking. Mm-hmm. You believe that they could fight action star. You know, Van Damme was very good looking. Stallone got good looking. And Arnold, I always thought Arnold was so cool looking. I always thought so. Wouldn't it be cool if someone just made a movie where someone was kind of like not fit at all? Die Hard. He did it. But he was, he he had a toy body. He had a toy body. He did. Yeah. He was wearing that wife beater. Sure. Do people say that anymore? Um, 
Yeah. He, I, he I, was wearing that white. A shirt, you call it, I think, or tank top. Tank he's top. To. He's wearing a white tank top. He did not and have. He's going. He's tight. He is okay. hard. He is a hard. He had a hard body. He, he had biceps. So he had a body the way that 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 people who aren't movie stars have bodies or professional athletes. I or, wouldn't even. I think he's still even more fit than that. What about die, not when Die Hard with a Vengeance? Yeah, you're right. You're probably right about that. Yeah. But I want like a like kind of like a schlubby guy. It gives a different type of charm to it when they could do that. But would it would anyone care? I wonder we already like Bruce Willis. Yeah. So the hard work is done. The hard work is do we like somebody? Do we trust that they could do this thing? Uh huh. Then you don't need to have that body. That's why Arnold could still, you know, that's why the expendables work so well. Uh, which it does. Um, I think if we were going to meet somebody for the first time and they weren't having something, for example, you know, doing their own stunts, like something where you like you're buying into it. I think it's an uphill battle if they're not ripped. Yeah, you might be right. I know that's sad. That's tough. But I get it. I get why. I mean, they're aspirational. They're like fantasy movies for men, Mm -hmm. mostly. They're superheroes. It's the same thing as superheroes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're just like they're things that men want to aspire to. So if, if you're not fit, there's a story point it's just in a comedy in, in, um, in one of the Avengers movies where Thor got fat and that was funny. Yeah. It's funny that he's not, you know, when he's like this, whoa, he's a superhero. If he's not, not only do we not buy it, it's funny, but also <laughs> they use prosthetics. He didn't actually, he didn't Christian Bale it. Right. And you could kind of tell it was like that. It's still funny. I know. I remember that one. It wasn't that uh, the other, the uh, no, not, Thor, not Thor movie, the Thor one, the Thor one. Oh, was it Ragnarok or whatever? Yes. I thought it was Endgame. I think it was Ragnarok. Oh, or maybe I'm wrong. It could be Endgame. People at home know it. You know, Joe Maganello knows. He does. Let's call it. We have him on the phone. Um, uh, speaking of muscle. What's going on? Oh yeah, yeah. That's sure. Nice. I'd like to go back into um, into milking something a little bit here. My boobs. <laughs> Swipe to when she was on the balcony. We showed her boobs come back. <laughs> uh, there's a better chance of me going on. Conan needs a friend, or him coming on here. Him coming on here. Right. And it's not just because of the caliber of guests that goes on your show. Because it's less, it's easier for him because it's in his world. A lot of the people, the reason he has the podcast is he can talk to people that he like really, that he knows and he can have a conversation with. He knows you, but he doesn't know you as well as he knows Bill Flula Hader. or Flula Ron Funches. Or Ron. I'm in that same category, baby. Come on. Okay. But still, I'd rather him on mine. And if it's not that, then it is someone who's like a big sure. name. And you... You're that's why I want him on mine. I don't need to go on his. I'm not big enough. I, he doesn't know me enough. But by the time he comes on mine, he'll want me on there. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Will Smith, Rain yeah. Wilson. Yeah. I know. You don't have to sell me on it. I've been on this thing five times, baby. But I don't, I'm not trying five to sell you. Times, I'm trying baby. to have you sell him. So how do we do that? I'm not good at that. Um, And, but, you know, it's a lot of, he also doesn't know how certain podcasts are. So if he has people around him who are like, that's a good podcast, like you'd have a lot of fun on that, then he considers it more. So that's do? that's where I would come in, is where I would be like, you know what? That's actually a really great podcast because he gets requests for podcasts all the time. Sure. But if people don't know about it, then like there's no way to like sell him on it. So yeah, every now and then, you know, you know. By the way, uh, you know, I did Rick's. It's such. It's it's the most creative. It's the funniest thing I've ever been because I've been on. It's so you would have so much fun on it. Not you got to do it, Conan. I got to be honest. You you would have so much fun on that podcast. Okay, I think I've actually d- I, I have said that to him. I actually have said you would have a lot of fun on Rick's podcast. Keep it going every time, okay. every day. Okay, just oh, every day. Yeah. Okay. What could I do to uh, what? influence do i have how could i help you other than um finding a speech i mean you could send me an official email that talks about like hey your numbers maybe other guests you've had on because i'm not going to sell it as well as you are and then i can chime in and be like hey you know what rick sent me this this podcast 
uh, or this request for you to be on his podcast. I've been on it. It's fine. Check your email. You can't have done it that Check your quickly. Email. You didn't send me anything. Why don't you uh, check your camera app? Put it on you. Oh. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That's good. I did not see that coming. And this is the stuff that Conan's going to freak out about. I just need to take a picture of myself with it. Okay. Do you want her back? Uh, yeah, but you She's could leave got it there more for now. sticky. Yeah, on the bottom. You know who? Uh, you can multiple, multiple, yeah. multiply. I learned that from Taryn Killam. I used to just rebuy mustaches. At the time, they were five bucks a piece. Now they're ten bucks a piece. Get out! And I was buying them all the time because I used I used to use mustaches. A t I still use them, but I used to use them a ton on stage. And uh, uh, there it was expensive. And, uh, you know, the SNL alum that he is, he goes, I know mustaches. I know how this stuff works. You just get, and he told me about the certain type of tape made total sense. Yeah. And now I could reuse a mustache probably, I use it probably 30, 40 times. Nice. I know. You get more bang for your, your buck. buck. Yeah. How'd you know I was going to say that? <laughs> I love you, Rick. I love you too. What else though? I don't know. We could wrap it up soon. Well, I, know, I, yeah, because I, I do need to out. leave at one thirty. I know. Because I got to go. Oh, but I wonder if, if there's anything like, what can I ask you? Did it hurt? No, when you, uh, uh, when your babies came out of you. Oh, I was numb. I had a C-section. I, I know. You do? Do you not remember what I was trying to get you to do with me? I was trying to let I have let I wanted to do the podcast while you were have while yes. you were being while open. I was being while I was delivering my children. Yeah. You wanted to be in there with me. You almost you almost let it happen. Do you remember do you, this? I do because I thought that would be funny. It's like the time I let you cut my hair. I let you cut my hair. Swipe. Rick, you just need to go for it. I'm telling you it's okay. Oh my Beautiful. God. Now what do I do with this? How am I going to get this off when it's wet? <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? Beautiful. Oh <laughs> I'm god. just cutting some shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god, it's beautiful. so much. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I'm going to cry. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing to my hair? Oh my god. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I would never let you do that now. That was a pandemic moment. You did okay. If I were to do it again, I, I've since also cut my hair. Oh. Uh, and I did the same thing to you that it did to me, which was I didn't respect the curl. You're cutting off a lot more. Yes. That's why you either wet and straighten it or just do less. You got to respect the curl. But, but I watched a YouTube video. I did all right. It was too short. You yeah, that was the well, and it was uneven. One side was really well, you know, short. I, you One fixed side, that up. yeah, but it was. But I did layers. It wasn't. No, you didn't. I did. It was not at all. It wasn't. Some. It does not. I'm talking about my comedy. It had layers. Okay, yeah, that's true. But it wasn't bad enough where I had to keep my hair tied for months until it grew out. That's all you could ask. So is that all you can ask? Well, you know, bare um, minimum maybe. But now, like, I go to a curly hair specialist, and you know, she doesn't fuck around. She would be. Furious at me if you ruined the shape you know, of my hair. Could I turn you into an uh one of those cards, one of those uh Tyson yeah, cards? You can. Who would you be? Well, who do I? What fat do you mean? Thor. I'll be Fat Thor. <laughs> I would totally be Fat Thor. Is that weird though? Because he also walks around with his shirt off. I want massive knockers, but them covered kind of, and a giant belly. Have you, this is a terrible term. Have you heard that term? Booby? No, I don't want to say it because it's a terrible term. I don't want to say it. I think it's very misogynistic and I think it's gross. And I, I don't want to perpetuate it then. I think that's good of you. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. My, Who would you be? Uh, fat Thor. No. Um, out of what? What are the options? It There's no particular universe. It doesn't have to be specifically superheroes, but like oh. typically they're superheroes. Everybody is a version of a superhero except for Eric Griffin, who is Mr. Potato Head. That's great. But everybody else is a superhero, but from any any universe. Oh, that's a good You know question. who I think might, you might be cool? April O'Neil. 
Shut. I loved April O'Neil. That yellow jumpsuit. And also, we were talking about Picasso and different. You, you, I, said you I said Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Yeah. Is it pronounced Michelangelo or Michelangelo? I, they pronounced it Michelangelo on the show. I call him Michelangelo. My kids are really. We we let them see a couple episodes, then they got really into doing karate on each other. Smart. And Good so we protect, were like, it's to protect we, themselves. But I don't want them to do that. Like they would, they would like, they would fight. And then they would just say hi ya, thinking that was them doing some sort of well, martial young, arts. But they're really young. They're two and a half. That's, they're too young to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So now it's like banned in my no, house. No, the cartoon, not the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. cartoon. Yeah. So a lot of people think karate is teaching people how to fight. What karate is teaching people is um, first uh, and most importantly, self discipline. And second, it is um, uh, uh, to how to defend yourself. It is not an offensive. Uh, oh, I know. Sport. My husband is uh, one belt away from a black belt. Brown. Black. Black. He's a brown belt. He is currently a brown belt. That's what I'm saying. He's very close to a black, though. So. Because um, you're different degrees of yeah. brown. Did I'm, you do it? Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from when I was nine until I don't Last year of college. So 21. Wow. Second degree. That does not fuck around. Uh, I used to compete uh, a lot and started to get some uh, injuries. And that's when I just like, I'm just going to play basketball. I mean, you I don't have fast it. What's that? You don't have fast it. No. But uh, I have fast quite a bit. I did beat a lot of people up. Did it feel good? Do you it, still do it? I beat people up? No. Uh, BJJ. No. Why? You were in Brazilian jiu-jitsu at nine? That was like before I feel like it was a thing. You mean before it was popular? Yeah. Like popular mainstream because of, yes. of MMA. Yes. But anybody who did martial arts stuff, that was always one of the, one of the categories. Because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of gyms are jiu-jitsu gyms. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I started with Taekwondo, but the gym that I went to, it was a jiu-jitsu gym. Mm. And I'm like, what is this stuff? And what I liked about it, and I was wrong, but what I thought I liked about it was uh, I'm not going to be, there's not as many kicks to the face. You know, like I was always scared of that, like wrestling wasn't scary. Yeah. Um, And uh, uh, I got really into it and I got really, really, really good. And you got kicked in the face a lot. Still got kicked in the face a lot. I have but a friend like who, who recently became a, not recently, in the last few years became a black belt. And he said when he became a black belt, he had to fight all the other black belts back to back to back to back to back. And there were like 10 different people he had to fight. And he said it was like one of the hardest things he ever had to do. I think they were punking him. Maybe. But that was for his specific, do they call it dojos if it's Brazilian to jujitsu? Uh, maybe. I, I don't. I, well, I, it's it not, a gym it's me. not a, this, I, I feel so stupid. I mean, dojo is, is that, isn't that a Japanese word? And is so, isn't that applicable to karate? But is it a dojo is a place. It's not about the, the it's not about what is being trained. It's about but where what's you're training. The word? Dojo. But no, but like, what is the root you of could the train, word? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. You could train in a dojo. You could train in a gym. You could train in a basement. A dojo is, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, It is bothering me though that. Yeah, you're going to do it again. And I turned around. You're halfway through doing you, you really, it. I'm not. Then look that. at me when you fix it and I'll tell you what to do. I can't look at you, Rick. I got to look at this. You're, there's nothing wrong with it. I know you. You wouldn't allow it to be tilted. Okay. You wouldn't allow for it. Okay. It's not. Okay. If you look at the top of that one and the top of that one, you see they're at an angle. I don't see that. Okay. You did. I think I could hear. I, I know you're. <laughs> I know you did. I know what you did. And I hope you're happy with yourself. Are you happy with yourself? What did I do? You did a thing what behind my back. And I felt it. And it makes me think that you don't know what we're talking about. And you're leaving me high and dry. Well, you're telling the audience, I don't know what a dojo is. And I'm trying to figure it out. And I look like an asshole now. I, yeah. Would, yeah. Wouldn't that make me look like the asshole if I was punking you? Kind of. I don't know, man. I'm done with that part of it. All right. Well, whether I or not you, I trained or no didn't what. train in martial arts isn't the point. The point I'm getting at did is... Did you not train? You didn't do it? I did a lot of stuff. What the fuck, 
Rick. Why I did, did I a lot fall of stuff. for it? I did, I did a lot of training. No, you didn't. You didn't do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I did taekwondo. I can. For how long? When you were four for a year. I, Come no. on. Come on. I was so invested in it. I was so I was so impressed and invested. And you were like second degree. You're not a second degree Brazilian jiu-jitsu person. Okay. You did play basketball. I did I've a lot seen of, it. I did a lot of things. I used to fight. I used to train. I used to beat people up. I used to get beat up. I used to. Have you ever been in a fight for real? Like a real one. Been I've been in a fair amount of fights. You don't you don't have a mouth like this without uh, learning how to back it up. Yeah, that's true. I want to fight you. What are you doing? Is that what you do? Yeah. Do you just hold? Do you want me, you want me to teach you a little an exercise you could do with anybody, and it'll help with your uh, your reflexes? And um, it's to me a true wax on wax off. I don't think this is really going to teach you how to block, but I could Clearly show you a little did. exercise before you, you won go. The All Valley Championship. Okay. Um. Here, come here. I should believe this. Yeah, it's 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 cool. Okay. So we'll go very slow, of course. So so strike me slow like this. Like I this, can like see this. it in your face no, that see. you're kind of Watch. bullshitting me. Watch. Okay, hold on. My pants are really riding up. Okay, let's do very it. Very slow like this. Okay, okay, I'm gonna show you something. So with the cross hand, go ahead. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this, a couple parts. You just okay. go once very slow. I'm going to put it away. Okay. Okay. And while I'm putting it away, I will strike you. So let me show you. Come okay. at it. So. Here, right? So I'm gonna push it away. As it's being pushed away, I'm gonna go up with this hand and keep it crossed with okay. the opposite. So it's slow. It's for a boom, 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 and then when I do this, you're gonna do the same with this hand. Okay. So come at me. Okay. Coming up, come at me with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear you later. But did you make that up? No. Okay, all right. No, it uh, pe people people in the comments will know because a lot of people that watch this are fans of Joe Rogan and they understand what I'm doing. Okay. But uh, before we get out of here, I do, do you want really to say, have a lot you of gotta check out Reggie Watts. Re Reggie Watts. I love Reggie Watts. So I, Never met you, him. We'll meet him soon. Do you have a lot of cross pollination with the Rogan crowd? Probably not. I don't think you do. I mean, maybe. I don't. But think probably you do. not. People no. that watch this podcast are intellectuals. Oh, um, shots fired. Uh, not that that I mean, Joe Rogan has uh, uh, has uh, uh, what's the word? Academics on all the time. Not that he doesn't have intellectuals. Uh, he has. Intellectuals and non-intellectuals. Okay. He has. Yours are only has intellectuals. The ninety percent of the people that watch this podcast are intellectual and or have a lot of anxiety. Mm. If you are neither an intellectual nor comment below, um, intellectual anxiety, neither intellectual or anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't have either, fuck off. Well, no, 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 no that's the 10%. Okay. I'm just okay. curious. No, 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 you're right. Okay, that was not cool. Yeah. I shouldn't tell people who are listening to your podcast to fuck off. Yeah, but they wouldn't listen anyway because they get it. They're yeah. intellectual. Yeah, that's Or they're true. so anxious that they'll be like, I, they missed it. Or they're neither. And those people, they don't, they, they, they don't care. The... Yeah. Anything you want to plug? No. I'll do it then. Okay. New York Times bestseller, Sonam of Sessi and the world's worst assistant. Yeah. Let me read the forward. I don't know if Are you is, really going to read the whole forward? Uh, I'll read your forward to me instead of Conan's oh, to you. Oh, okay. Okay. The world's worst assistant. Rick, I love you. Couldn't have written this without you. Wait. No, I could have. Sonam of Sessi Now, have you always uh, completed your signature with a, with a boob? Is that like your identity? Hey. Boob. No, that's always just been my signature. It's my the I and the I A N. It's a little beep boop. But now it's a boob. Do you like that I know how to spell your name? Yeah, I love that you know how to spell my name. When you came on before and I didn't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. And then um when I had to type in for the thumbnail, uh I I I am and I kept doing that. I'm like, okay, move says C and it was to help understand how to do it, and then I learned how to spell it. And pronounce it. Yeah. Because people don't know you, you use, you pronounce every letter in the. Movsessian. Movsessian. Yeah. Gra gl Glassman. Yeah, that one's easier. It is. It's nice. It's nice to have a name you don't have to like spell all the time or people are like. What would be an easier get? Albert Brooks or Conan O'Brien? For me. 
Because I, I think, think Conan. Albert, I think Albert Brooks would really be into my what I do. I think so too. I but more I think, so than Conan. No, I think Conan would be really into it too. I think they would both be really into it because they're both such fans of good comedy. But I think Appreciate that it. they. I don't know. I think. I don't think Albert Brooks do, does a lot of podcasts. Of course not. But I think. I think if. I think he would like it. I think he would too. I think you would like it. Yeah. What about a podcast called Rick and Albert? And I just always had people on whose name was Alberts. Oh. Albert Bell. There's not that many. That's why I'm saying, please. When Who was the last younger person that you met named Albert? It's a, like a bit of an older name. Um. Can I, can I show you something in my Instagram messages? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven down. Who's that? What, read me the name. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. Albert Rutecki. That's right. Did uh, I pronounce that right? Rutecki? Uh, Albert played Harrison on my show As We See It. Yes. I do remember him. Yeah. And we were talking the other day. His name's Albert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I could have him Did on. Did I pronounce his last name right? That's how I say it. Okay. Yeah. And he's never corrected you. Uh, I think whenever I do it, I say uh, Albert Rutecki and I also a pack of uh, a pack of uh, gum, some batteries, um, Albert Rutecki. But he's been on my pod before. Yeah. And uh, I could have him. I could have Albert Poolhos, Albert Bell, uh, Albert Brooks. And then like if they could each come on once a month. Okay. <laughs> you know? All right. He might be into that. He could. Yeah. Just a once a month gig. Yeah. That'll be fun. Anyway, we got to let you go. I'm going to, I want to make sure I have enough time to take a Polaroid of you. Okay. Have you sign it. Yeah. Uh, And if you wouldn't mind next to your signature, if you could just draw a picture, you don't have to do two, but just maybe at least one boob. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, I love you, Rick. I love you. Theme music. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop.